Even on this cold, gray, overcast day, the campus of the University of Notre Dame is the perfect setting for collegiate football. Today, Touchdown Jesus is watching over the only two Division 1A Catholic schools, Boston College and Notre Dame. The football connection between these two great institutions goes back to 1939 and 1940 when BC was undefeated and laid claim to the national title under then head coach Frank Leahy before he moved to the top job at Notre Dame for 11 years and four more national championships. Boston College and Notre Dame, they meet today on this autumn afternoon. NBC Sports is proud to present Boston College and Notre Dame from South Bend, Indiana. Hello, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones, along with Bob Trumpy. Well, a man by the name of Tom O'Brien has opposed Notre Dame, first as a player with Navy, then as assistant coach with Navy, and he does it one more time, this time as head coach at Boston College. And, Charlie, consider that Tom O'Brien is the fourth head coach for Boston College in seven years. So his first point to us was, this program has had very little continuity. In fact, the last two head coaches were both pro coaches, Dan Henning being the most recent one. And he said, one of the problems I inherited was that last spring when I showed up, I had found a football team that had nine tight ends <laughs> and seven running backs. So he you would to, like the tight ends. Yes, I would. <laughs> but he had to move a lot of people around. Young team, strong team, runs well, and, and it is a team that really gives an awful lot of effort. Meanwhile, Notre Dame is embroiled in a quarterback controversy. And it's one created by the head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron Paulus, even though he has been the starter, this is his fifth year. His numbers, when it comes to passing, are incredible. But you always judge the quarterback on wins and losses. He's 2-5 and five as a starter, and therefore, Jarius Jackson, his backup, will get more than just a peak today. He has been running the full house backfield in short yardage and goal line. But Jarius Jackson's going to get an honest look today. And he's yet to throw a pass in 1997, and therefore the controversy. The Weather Channel today had tornado warnings at Tupelo, Mississippi. That is the hometown of Jarius Jackson. So the Tupelo tornado will make his appearance here at Notre Dame Stadium. We'll be back with a kickoff right after Saturday afternoon in South Bend, Indiana. Another sellout crowd. This is the ninth meeting between Boston College and Notre Dame. Started in 1975, but of course... With the Frank Leahy connection, as we mentioned at the top of the telecast, it goes back to the year 1939. The Irish lead 6-2. They have won the last two. The last Boston College win was in uh, 94, and that was in Boston, of course, in 93 is the one that all the, uh, that all the Notre Dame fans uh, shed a tear over and all the B.C. fans cheer over, and that is the time that they knocked uh, Notre Dame after defeating Florida State for number one in the nation, and he knocked them out of their undefeated season. Uh, frankly, let me go back. Uh, you, you mentioned Frank Leahy. I wonder if Boston College has ever forgiven Frank Leahy for leaving and coming to Notre Dame. You know, there are some old-time fans up there in Boston who still might remember that as a very black day in Boston College history. The leprechaun, and you saw the Boston College Eagle is... The Eagles of Boston College down the tunnel here at Notre Dame Stadium, led by their head coach, Tom O'Brien. Boston College does come in with a four-game losing streak, but they certainly had their best opportunity for a win last week. That uh, overtime attempt at two points might sit for a long time in the craw of a lot of uh, Boston College fans. That was against Miami, of course, and uh, and I thought the interesting what Tom O'Brien said about his young ball club was that they didn't think that they could take on Miami, and he fin figured out in reality that they really could, and they came from behind to tie it up and take it into overtime. And the Eagles of Boston College greeted with a round of solid boos here by the Notre Dame faithful. The records are identical. They're both two and five, two ball clubs that in reality are both struggling, but two ball clubs that have the possibility, of, which, you know, is one of those devastating words that uh, youngsters in the athletic profession carry on their shoulders, and sometimes it can, it can hold you back. Sometimes it can push you forward. And, of course, the tradition of the Notre Dame football team Playing like it, playing as a champion as they uh, traditionally always touch the sign as they go down the steps leading into the tunnel. 
Here's Bob Davey, the head coach of Notre Dame. And as you said, a controversy that he has created himself. And I'm kind of surprised. Uh, first year head coach, you want as much uh, together and solidarity on your football team. But part of the dilemma is that this is Ron Paulus's last year. And they do need to find out if Jarius Jackson can be a quarterback for next year. But Ron Paulus did come back for a fifth year, hoping for a national championship that's now deteriorated into, we hope not at the end of this season, but at least today, some time on the bench, which is not what he expected. Mm -hmm. And now the moment and all of the Notre Dame players say this is so special to them and that is coming out of the tunnel into Notre Dame Stadium. Sometimes we get caught up in so much that is going on around us that we should take a moment in time and, and to enjoy this just as the players do. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. arrived at the stadium today John Dockery asked him because of the quarterback controversy was there more pressure this week well you know I, I don't look at it as pressure it's, this is this is what's happening to me right now and uh, you know I, I don't wish to change things and uh, it's what's happening and, and I'll deal with it do you feel the job is still yours yeah I do and I think that that's been uh, um, you know that's what's been relayed to the team from Coach Davey and from the coaches that um, we want to get Jerry some playing time to uh, give him the chance to to get some action and see some action and help prepare him for next year. Um, but yeah, I do feel the job is mine. Uh, you know, and and the, and the thing is, there's everybody wants to see a controversy, and I don't think there is. And I think the main reason of that is because Jerry and I are our friends, and and, and we respect each other, and, and uh, you know we support each other. And um, you know, I, I'd like to see Jerry get prepared for next year and uh, and um, you know this is the way it's going to be so uh, but you'd also like to see yourself go out on a high point uh, no question but uh, you know I think there's been um, you know there's been so many ups and downs in my career here and this is uh, you know this is something that's happening here at the end and uh, you know certainly I'd like to go out on a different note but um, you know I'm going to play my game and uh, you know I will move on Certainly a lot of ups and downs for Ron Paulus in his career, but this past week he was absolutely wounded, wounded as a quarterback by the boos that cascaded down here at the stadium by the criticism. But to his credit, he stood up to his detractors. He's answered questions, including those I posed to him this morning before the game. And I just get a sense that he has a strength of character to deal with this situation, even with Jarius Jackson breathing down his nose, Charlie and Trump, breathing down his neck. John Dockery, if I may make a comment, I heard in Ron Paulus's response to one of your questions, he said, we want to see what Jarius Jackson can do. He is still a team player, Ron Paulus is. And a class young man. Notre Dame won the toss. Well, they've been winning the toss this year. They've been taking the football. They're now going to defer it. They've been struggling in the second half, particularly in the third quarter. They've only scored, what, a total of 10 points in the points. third quarter this whole year. So they want the football at the beginning of the second half. So that means that Derek Crittenden and Jermaine Walker are the deep backs to return the opening kickoff for the Eagles of Boston College. Jim Sampson will kick it away. A man who in reality may have caused the controversy by missing three or four field goals last week. Crittenden on the return is out to the 15, angles to the left of the 20, and a nice return across the 25, down around the 27 of the 28-yard line. 22 yards on the return. Let's check out that offense of Boston College. And first spot, their offensive line. Watch this young man, 63, Damian Woody. He turns 20 November 3rd, 6'5", 310 pounds. The quarterback, his dad played in the NFL, Don Hasselbeck. Matt Hasselbeck is an excellent play fake quarterback. They spotted at the 27-yard line, first down. They open on the ground as expected. Omari Walker, the senior, gets the call. Across the 30, out to about the 31-yard line. We'll mark it for four as we look at the Notre Dame front three. Hey, these guys are going to get hammered. Boston College loves to run the football. And the back seven, they're going to have to have that eighth guy up there at the line of scrimmage to help with the tackles. It's going to be 
Devron Harper, the eighth man in the box to help us slow down the running of Boston College. And that's exactly what you see. Eight men up front. They call it eight in the box of four linebackers behind the four defensive linemen. Omari Walker to the right side out to the 35-yard line. He has four. It'll be third down and two as Bobby Howard and Alan Rossum make the tackle. Now, Omari Walker is Mr. Inside for Boston College. Uh, he's the guy who kind of carries the load inside. Then they also have Mike Cloud who comes out with a little more speed. And, and Charlie, when we talked to Tom O'Brien, he said the biggest problem we have on our football team is that we really don't have a real deep threat. We don't have somebody who can just break it loose. Matt Hasselback from the shotgun, third down and two. His first basketball game goes downfield into coverage. Intercepted. Notre Dame has the ball. Benny Gilbo with the interception down the sideline. The first turnover of the ball game. Hasselbeck's first interception of the ball game is eighth of the year. 25-yard return by Benny Gilbo. He picks off his second pass of the season. Crossing pattern run by Boston College. The ball was intended for Anthony DeCosmo, number 11. Thrown behind him. Very poor pass by Hasselbeck, which is highly unusual. Hasselbeck is a... And a very accurate thrower for Boston College. But you can say it, Gilbo off the bounce makes the interception. Good field position, Notre Dame. 20 yard line of Boston College, first down. We'll have a flag. Jumping in contact made prior to the snap. Chris Hovan came across. He is claiming that he was drawn off with a false start. But then don't all those tackles claim that they were drawn off? Of course. I claim it here in the booth. The officials from the Big East, Hal Priest, foul. referee. Encroachment on the defense. It is offsides Stop. against the Eagles. Five yard penalty, still first down. First down and five, 15 yard line. Hovan, 95, is going to be cheating at that line of scrimmage up to the ball as much as he possibly can. Gained 30 pounds from last year to this year to move into nose tackle. First and five, 15 yard line of Boston College. Autry Denson, they string him out and bring him down. A loss of five back to the 20-yard line. Nice defensive play by George White, the strong safety. Notre Dame has been struggling in what they call the red zone. That's 20 and going in. And they're 23 times. And just 12 touchdowns and four field goals. Most teams, I'm kind of surprised at that first run there. Most teams have run to the short side of the field against Boston College. That sweep was to the wide side of the field. Second down and ten. Ball is to throw. Sets, goes to the end zone. Divey catch no. Malcolm Johnson cannot pull it in. It is incomplete. Shalom Tolfrey, the senior from Kansas City, had the coverage. It'll be third down and ten. Johnson runs a nice pattern. You're going to see him fake the post and then go back outside. Good release. Everything works. This ball is just a little bit overthrown, but this should have been caught. He was still in a position to catch the football, and that's what's happened to Notre Dame. When it comes to making a big play this season, they've just failed time after time after time. Third down and 10, Paulus from the shotgun. Has pressure, steps away, tucks it under, and now he comes up and throws on the run to Jabari Holloway, and Holloway the 6'4", 235-pound freshman just bulls his way inside the five-yard line. Pedro Serino finally stops him. He's the leading tackler for BC. Charlie, this is just the Jabari Holloway's second reception of the season. His first went for a touchdown. He's still learning. Two months ago is when he showed up on campus, 16 yards on that catch, shows some strength, shows some power. Good job by Paulus finding the outlet receiver. Four-yard line, first down goal to go. T-team is in this Jarius Jackson with a full house backfield. The handoff is to Tony Driver. It's Denson, Tony Stokes, Driver and Driver the across the top of the tee. Audrey Denson, Clement Stokes, and Tony Driver. They go to the one-yard line, second down goal. Now, this was Tom O'Brien's greatest fear. His defensive line is not big, and he worried as did Tim Rose, the defensive coordinator, that Notre Dame's big offensive line could just flat overpower Boston College up front. Jamie Spencer checks into that offensive set.
touchdown, Notre Dame. Again, the T team gets it to the far back. It's Tony Driver. Excellent second and third effort gets Driver in the end zone. Capitalizing on the interception. Scott Sinja will attempt the point after, and it is blocked. So the kicking woes of Notre Dame continue as they surface on an extra point attempt. Scott Sinja replacing Jim Sampson, who we missed those. Hit only one of four field goals last week. Again, you see the power of the offensive line of Notre Dame there and driver in the end zone. The snap is good. The block is just too low. He hits the, the center of the guard right in the middle of the back. Who do they go to next to kick field goals or extra points? Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium. Let's go back to that extra point attempt. And it does get over the line of scrimmage. It's Matt Willits, number 98, who gets his hand up. But the kicking woes continue, as you said, Charlie, for Notre Dame. Jermaine Walker and Derek Crittenden are the deep backs on the return. And Crittenden feels it at the 10-yard line after the 20 across the 25 down around the 27-yard line. Follow Notre Dame football online at NBCSports.com. John Dockery provides analysis of today's game. Way to go, John. And discusses the state of Irish football and what the future holds. Hey, I want to I want to listen in to see what John has to say for it. Plus, listen in to audio of former players, coaches, and alumni. It's all NBCSports.com. Boston College now in offense for the second time in the ball game. They go back to the ground. Omari Walker will bring you up to date on the interception when Hasselbeck's pass was intercepted by Benny Gilbo. Matt Hasselbeck, the quarterback, is a man who made the tackle and saved the touchdown down the sideline and he came up limping and was limping along the sideline. We had a question in our own mind there. You see number seven making the stop of whether he would be back in. He's all right. He is back in. Now he's still getting over that fractured thumb on his throwing hand where his hand hit a helmet several weeks ago against the University of Cincinnati. Amari Walker to the right side. He'll be stacked up behind the line of scrimmage by Corey Miner. So he's going to lose a yard on the play. It'll be third down and long, and now Hasselbeck will have to throw. And that means look out for another interception because he has not looked that good thus far. Yeah, and of course, the best part of uh, Boston College's passing game is the play action. And in order for the play action to work, you have to have the threat of the run. But Notre Dame so far has shut the run down, so play action really not a factor. Third down and six. Flags come flying. Everybody got the message of the snap count, but the center. <laughs> I once asked Randy Cross, how did that happen? He said, oh, it's easy. He was a center of the 49ers. You can forget it all the time. Sure, it happens all the time. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Let's Still go down to John Docker. Charlie and Trump, you know, I talked to Tom O'Brien before the game, and one of the things he said to me was that Boston College, you know, a team with a 2-5 and five record, not a lot of confidence, had to get off well early in this hostile environment. Obviously, just the opposite has happened with the interception, and now they're in third and long. So things not going the way O'Brien hoped. He said that was one of the keys to the game. Uh, Hasselbeck needs to come up with a big play here. Little play action fake. He rolls right. Looking downfield, everybody was covered. Steps out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. Uh, see, again, Charlie, that is a play that works off play action. You run the ball well, you, you draw the defense one way, and then you roll another way. But because Boston College has yet to really establish any kind of a running game, Notre Dame didn't buy a bit of it, and there were several guys there. Melvin Dansby was in hot pursuit. Alan Rossum now is set to return the kick of Jason Malecki. First punt of the ball game. 
Larson with that great speed to give the Irish outstanding field position. Not that good a kick. Rossum will step away from it, takes an Eagles roll inside the Notre Dame 40 to about the 38 yard line. 43 yards on the kick. Mike Himmer downs the ball. Notre Dame will move on offense when we come back. Notre Dame up 6 0 over Boston College. A touchdown off of the interception. A 20 yard touchdown drive. The extra point attempt was blocked. It is cold here. The wind chill factor will be in the 30s this afternoon. It'll be warmer in Miami tonight for game six of the World Series on NBC tonight at 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific. The Marlins and the Indians. So stay with us throughout the day on NBC. Paulus will play action. Fate goes deep as a man wide open. Malcolm Johnson. And he is down at the 25-yard line. Malcolm Johnson, who had that diving almost grab in the end zone, pulls this one in for 37 yards. Charlie, you'll notice as he breaks inside, no free safety. Boston College committing the extra man to the line of scrimmage to stop the run. An excellent call by Jim Coletto, the offensive coordinator. And because the safety is out of the middle, Malcolm Johnson wide open. Joy Gather, all the freshman speedster, is in as a wide receiver. Wallace gives to running back Audrey Denson. Denson to the 20 yard line has six. It'll be second down and four. Well, now, Charlie, Boston College facing the same situation they did last week against Miami. They got down 24 to three before they could really get their feet on the ground. And so far in this season, Notre Dame has had great difficulty throwing the ball down the field. They've been able to. There's Tim Rose, defensive coordinator, Bob Davy, head coach of Notre Dame. Second down and four. Denson again plows through to the 10 yard line adds 10 yards to his total remember last week against USC in the first half 20 carries 106 yards rushing this week they're counting his carries a bit more. Yeah, they, they, Audrey Denson can carry the ball 30 times in a football game but he can't carry it 20 times in the first half and you can see the lack of long distance runs by Notre Dame's offense. Ken Berry, the fullback, that is only his 17th carry of the season, although he does have a 4.7 yard average. The senior from Berkeley, Missouri, is brought down by Brook Hill. So mark the ball at the eight yard line and it's second down. Boston College thus far in the ball game has been averaging only one yard offensively a play. Notre Dame has been averaging eight. The Irish now with three wide receivers. Gets into the right side, angles to the five, and goes out of bounds at the four-yard line, where it will be third down. Pedro Serino, the leading tackler, the free safety is the leading tackler for Boston College, takes him out of bounds. Now, this play run into the boundary or to the short side of the field, which is one thing that the Boston College defense has really suffered from. And why is that? Well, because they put their strength of their defense to the wide side of the field. Everyone runs away from 51 stores. He is the outside linebacker. So the other side of the the short side of the field is where teams run against Boston College all day long. Third down, Paulus. Fade into the corner. It is there for Malcolm Johnson. Great timing pattern. Locked it high over the head of the defender. Nestled into the arms of Malcolm Johnson for his first touchdown of the year. Ray Phelps had the coverage, couldn't get to the football, and Johnson was there. Johnson, a big receiver. He doesn't mind the contact there, then separates. The cornerback does not even notice the ball is thrown, and, and uh, Malcolm Johnson at the 6'4", 6'5", on a good throw from Ron Paulus makes the reception and Notre Dame they're disdaining the any kind of a kicking game they're going for two and that's not to try to run up the score that's simply because of the failure of the kickers play action fake Paulus rolls has a man in the end zone hits him it's the tight end Jabari Holloway for two points Ron Paulus 
you begin to wonder if he is closing the door on any controversy as far as quarterbacks are concerned. Well, you just saw the touchdown pass by Ron Paulus, a beauty. And now Jabari Holloway, not just only a touchdown, but also a two-point conversion. With eight minutes and 18 seconds, that is the time remaining in the first quarter. Malcolm Johnson, who you saw with a touchdown reception. The two-pointer to Jabari Holloway, the tight end. Ron Paulus has led the Irish now to a 14-0 lead over Boston College. Jermaine Walker, Derek Crittenden are the deep backs on the return. Here is Crittenden. Crittenden to the 20 and nailed at the 21-yard line. 13 yards on the return. Let's go back first to Notre Dame and the interception by Benny Gilbo. Uh, Notre Dame has had a shortage of big plays per series. It starts well for Notre Dame. Gilbo on the uh, rebound catches that one. Runs it down the sideline. You'll see the quarterback. And now this pattern, Boston College expecting Notre Dame to run. Commits that eighth guy to the line of scrimmage. No free safety. Malcolm Johnson, his first catch of the day. And then he also catches a nice pass for a touchdown. Gives him a 14-0 lead. Davey breathing, breathing a lead. You know, he said to us, no school this week. It's the week after midterm, so his players' legs were a little fresher. He got to concentrate on just a little bit more of football this week, and at this point it showed. And with the penalty against Boston College on the return, the ball is spotted at the 11-yard line. Mike Cloud is the remaining back for Boston College. Cloud slides down the line. There's nothing there. Corey Miner makes the tackle. Uh, the defensive line of Notre Dame all over this Boston College offensive line. And Charlie, this Boston College offensive line is a good bunch. You see the slant by Notre Dame's defense? Just enough. Good pursuit. Everybody up there at the line of scrimmage. Corey Miner, Mel Dansby, Laurent Bryant. If Boston College can't run, they can't win. Second down, 11. Quick over the left side for the flying cloud, the junior from Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Melvin Dansby makes the tackle after a gain of about three. Charlie, the reason I say if Boston College can't run, they can't win. At this point in the season, you've seen what the tandem running backs have combined for, 1,099 yards and nine touchdowns. This offense averages 215 yards rushing per game. And their entire philosophy on offense is built around the ability to run. Boston College total offense thus far nine yards to Notre Dame 78. We have locking on that offensive line. That will be a false start and a five-yard penalty against Boston College. And be sure to stay with us on NBC throughout the day. And, of course, we ended up with the World Series tonight in Miami. I know the players are glad to be there where it's a bit warmer than it was in Cleveland. But understand there may be a little bit of rain, but there's always rain in South Florida. Sure, always. And it's warm rain. Warm rain, yes. Yeah. Right. What do they say about it's the... 83 degrees there right now. And what do they say about dry heat? Ah, you don't feel it. Warm rain? Ah, you don't feel it. 70% humidity. Well, that's nice. They're sitting around the pool, what they're doing right now. Florida would watch anything involved baseball, regardless of temperature this evening. Third down and 13. Pass it up from the shotgun, steps away. Out near the 20 yard line, he'll come up a couple of yards shy of the first down. Ivory Covington, the senior from Decatur, Georgia, cornerback. Moved up and Minor made the stop, so it'll be fourth down, and the Eagles will have to he kick it away. Down. And Charlie, the, the point here, early stages of the game, no running. The inability to uh, run by Boston College keeps everybody back. Nobody for Hasselbeck to throw to. So it, momentum totally on the side of Notre Dame. Allen Ross the return man. Low driving kick. He has it with a 10-yard cushion. Has great speed, but nice recovery by Boston College. He gets only nine yards on the return. Mike Himmert makes the tackle. Will step aside. Notre Dame is up 14 to nothing over Boston College.
Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium on this cloudy Saturday afternoon. Here's Ron Paulus, the quarterback of Notre Dame, and his passing yards the last four games, Bob. Dropped dramatically. I'm not sure you can just look at uh, Ron Paulus and say it's all his fault. But to this point, the defense is doing their job, giving the offense great field position. And they've done an excellent job of just spreading the ball around. Three for four for 56 and a touchdown. And a two-point conversion. And it, this is a nice start. Most coaches at any level would like a start like this. Clement Stokes and Jamie Spencer are now the two running backs for Notre Dame. So Ken Berry and Audrey Denson with a breather here. Play action. First down. Pressure and a sack. Sack to the 34-yard line. Eric Stores, that is his 10th sack of the year. That's got to lead the nation. And this is the young man that the teams try to avoid. Stores was down as a defensive end last year. Now he's up as an outside linebacker. And they tried to have the fullback, Jamie Spencer, block him. Watch 33 come in here. Stores just throws him out of the way for Boston College's first sack of the day. Second 19 split backs, passing formation, two wide receivers. Ball is in the pocket. Over the middle, almost intercepted. Oh, Brooke Heal, a walk-on from Sudbury, Massachusetts, almost had the interception. And Charlie, it was intended for the tight end. Watch Jabari Holloway. Unique communication between receiver and quarterback. See, he moves. Actually, because Holloway moves out of the way, Heal becomes almost the interceptor. Brooks' brother, Ryan, also a walk-on, is a scout team quarterback. He was Ron Paulus during the week. Did he intercept him any? Uh, I don't think so. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Third down, 19. Four-man rush. Oh, he's has a man wide open on the sideline. Rakai Nelson. Nobody was there. 26 yards. Shalom Tolfrey finally got there. Somebody blew a coverage. Uh, this is double coverage. Corners up, safety's out. The safety doesn't rotate out far enough. There he comes into view finally. The safety, George White, doesn't get out there quick enough. And another fine throw by Ron Paulus right on the sideline. Big third down pickup for Notre Dame. Third down and 19. First down now at the BC 41 yard line. Getherall, the speedy freshman in motion, coming across. Behind him is Clement Stokes, the senior from Washington, D.C., rushed for 109 yards against Pitt. He'll pick up almost 10 here. Pat Phelps, the cornerback, with the tackle. Watch the fullback lead right up through here. It's Jamie Spencer, 33. One of the things that's not worked or not been done particularly well by Notre Dame is the lead block by the fullback. That one was a good one and spring Stokes free. Nice block, Jamie Spencer. Second and one. Jamie Spencer, the fullback from Monroe, Louisiana. Chris Hovan, the nose tackle with the stop. Should have the first down right at the 30-yard line. Eric Stores made the tackle. Hovind also in on the play. They'll measure. They'll bring the chains out for the measurement. Doesn't look that close to me, does no, it, to you? No, it doesn't. It's hard to believe that the way Notre Dame is playing at this point, they're 2-5. and five. We've seen most of the games. <laughs> yes. there, there is certainly evidence. First down, link to the football. First down, Notre Dame. But it's functioning and functioning properly for Notre Dame. Boston College, no first downs, 20 yards total offense. Notre Dame, five first downs, 104 yards. Still with four minutes, 12 seconds left to go, first quarter. The Irish up 14 to nothing over the Eagles of Boston College. Paulus with split backs. Play action fake, stops, goes deep. Here's a misread. What happens uh, is he and Malcolm away. Jones, he is throwing it away? Yeah, just threw it away. I thought maybe Johnson needed to cut to the outside. No, no, I, I think what happened, there was an audible there. There was an audible Second there, and, and Boston College changed coverage quickly, so there was bumping around on Malcolm Johnson. He's the only receiver he's looking for. 
See the linebacker drop. There was everybody. I'm taking no chances. <laughs> just throw it out of bounds. Good choice, Ron Paulus. Triple coverage. Second down and ten. Paulus rolling to the near side. Sets throws, and this time he misses Malcolm Johnson. Now that was miscommunication. Tell me what. Yeah, you just mentioned it. Paulus threw it outside. Malcolm Johnson ran the hook inside. And, and they the, both have to react off of the defense. What the defensive about, player does. And this is the new aspect of this Notre Dame offense. The quarterback reads the defense. The receiver reads the defense. And you see the, the receiver goes inside. If he had thrown it to Malcolm Johnson, the linebacker was right up underneath. There's Jim Coletto still putting in the offense here for Notre Dame. But that was miscommunication. Eighth play of the drive. Third down and ten. Joey Gethrell is in. Three wide receivers. The little freshman at 5'9". Paula says, I have to throw down to him. Of Malcolm Johnson. Paulus drilled him, hit him right on the six. And he dropped it. Carlton Rowe had the coverage. He should have had it. Uh, he reads the defense perfectly. It's a curl route. He's standing still. Ooh. I don't believe the uh, linebacker dropping in coverage tipped the ball at all. Let's see if anybody gets a hand on No, ball not tipped. That ball just ate him up, and it looks like Notre Dame's going for it on fourth and ten. ten. Johnson goes wide to the far side. Wallace in the shotgun. Three wide receivers. Blitz. Double blitz coming. Pressure. Throws it away. Just avoiding the loss. The Boston College secondary dropped in a semi prevent. They weren't going to let anybody get behind them. But it all happened up front. You're going to see Tim Rose, the defensive coordinator's choice is to put as much pressure on this fourth and ten as he possibly can. They rush seven people. Hovan 95 is the guy on Ron Paulus's face. Again, there's the smart thing and throw it away. That's Tim Rose, defensive coordinator. He wants an attacking style defense, but so far they've not attacked anybody in the initial stages of this game. Boston Cottage takes over on down at their own 30-yard line. Paulus, his last four passes were incomplete. Hasselbeck, play action, nice break. He keeps throwing it in. Across the 35, out to the 36-yard line. Bobby Howard with the tackle. As we go down to John Dockery. You know, Charlie, uh, we've been, and you, Bob, have been following the kicking problems for the Irish, and part of the reason they went for it on that fourth and long was the lack of a kicking game and the problems with Sinja and Sanson. And after this play, I think we should pick it up what happened last week after the USC game. All right, we'll be back to you in a moment. Second down and four. Now let's go down to John Docker. Joe, I remember the losing to USC last week, and Sanson missed those three field goals. Well, after the game, he was so distraught, he went into the locker room, sat in front of his locker for about a half hour, 45 minutes, didn't take off his uniform. Finally, he started talking to his buddy, Scott Singer, the other kicker, and together they came out onto a darkened, empty stadium, and Sanson kicked 15 or 20 field goals to try to get some of the pain out of his system with his buddy, Scott Singer, holding for him. Third and six, on target for the first down. First first down of the ball game for Boston College as Hasselbeck gets Scott Dragos, the number two tight end. Say number two tight end. They've got a slug at tight end, yes. including their, both of their fullbacks are former tight ends. And they third use down. them very well. When you have a good running game, play action to the tight end is a big factor. And you see an excellent pattern run there by Dragos. You had... Bobby Howard in coverage. Of course, now Hasselbeck's dad is a former tight end in the NFL. Maybe that's why Hasselbeck <laughs> likes the tight end so much. First down, 45-yard line. This one is off target to Anthony DeCosmo as we go down to John Dockery. John? You know, Charlie, and I know you and Trump have thoughts on the kicking game. It's been horrendous for the Irish, but obviously after that, Sanson got a little of the pain out after the game, but he also lost his job, and his buddy, who helped him during that therapeutic post-game kicking session, in the dark is now the kicker, Scott Sinja. The problems continue. He misses an extra point, so you have to wonder if Sanson is, you know, sympathizing with him on the sideline. Mm, yeah. Excellent point, Doc. Play action fake, steps away from pressure. Runs, throws, incomplete. 
He was looking for some help. Dragos, the intended receiver to Cosmos, was coming back to help him. Covington and Gilbo were there for Notre Dame. Rushing for Boston College thus far, Omari Walker and Mike Cloud have combined for a total of seven yards rushing. And that's why you see, Charlie, all the Notre Dame defenders dropping back in that intermediate area. There is no threat of the run whatsoever. So they're going to make it very difficult for Hasselbeck to come up with any kind of completion. Third down and ten. The Cosmo comes wide to the near side. Crittenden goes across in motion. Looks pressure from the outside. Gilbo gets him from the inside. Unrelenting pressure from the Notre Dame defense. And this a safety blitz called by Madison. Watch number two come right up through here. That's Benny Gilbo, the safety. The fullback, Omari Walker, actually tailback, tries to block him. Benny Gilbo runs right through him. So two big plays for Gilbo. The interception and the sack. Malecki will kick it away. Terrible kick. Blow. Takes a bit of a BC roll. Rossum takes a gamble. Picks it up on about the third hop. He is wrapped up immediately. 44 yards on the kick. Mike Hemmert was there for Boston College. We'll step, afi step aside. Back in a moment. Notre Dame leads 14-0. I think Jackson's coming in. <coughs> it's about time. 126. Yeah, this would be a good time to do it. Yeah. Paulus has looked good. Yeah, there's no damage to him coming in here. No. Uh -uh. I have to put Jackson in. Go okay. ahead, 14, nothing. Yeah, yeah. I think, he, done fine. I think he's in, Doc. I see him in the huddle there. Either that or he's visiting. <laughs> what is the line of screen? 17? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's in there. Number seven. Yeah, he's right in the middle. Hey, Trump. Yeah. Remember the first time Tony Rice went into the game? He was so nervous, he lined up behind the guard to take the snap. <laughs> Say Jackson's a little nervous. Yeah. Uh, 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 Doug Grabert, you want Paulus's reaction on the sideline first pass, okay? Okay. Okay. Let's hear the cheers. They always cheer. No, when Jackson comes in the game. Yeah, that's what I mean. They always cheer for the backup. Number seven, Jerry S. Jackson from Tupelo, Mississippi. Is in the ball game as a quarterback for Notre Dame. Exactly what Bob Davies said he was going to do. He said maybe the second quarter, the game will dictate it. Well, we have 126 left to go in the first quarter. Notre Dame is up by a score of 14, and I think they want to see what this youngster can do in actual battle condition. And actually, it's a perfect spot to put him in. A decent field position, not terrible field position, leading 14 to nothing. He hands off to the tailback, Audrey Denson. Well, he did one thing right because when Tony Rice came in this situation, when he was in, he lined up behind the guard. Yeah, but, but Jarius Jackson has some experience. In fact, oh, yeah. the last spring, Jarius Jackson had probably the most sensational spring of any quarterback, and this is learning a new offense. Now, the, the tag on Jarius Jackson is he's an option quarterback, so he has to disprove that tag to his teammates and his coaches. He's not thrown a pass this year in his career. 16 carries in his career. He's completed 10 of 15 here at Notre Dame. Play action, rolling, looking, throwing. He hits the freshman, Joey Gatherall. Nice pass, running to his left, right-hand passer, 17 yards. Good play, good open. And of course, you see Ron Paulus, he'll stay in the pocket. But with Jarius Jackson, with his speed, with his mobility, the rollout would be a factor, will be a factor next year for the Notre Dame Irish. So this is Paulus's last year. That's a nice completion. One for one for the season. Coach, take me out. <laughs> Jarius Jackson is a junior, but has two more years of eligibility. He told us if he wishes to stay. First down. Dixon. Just picks 
Makes his way to the defense of Barnes and Connor. What a nice run. Just picked his way. 17 yards. Brooke Hill finally got it. Uh, over the last two years, there's very little that Autry Denson has done that I don't like. I mean, good move. He senses where the openings are. Always running north and south. That's goal line to goal line. Uh, a young man who has absolutely astounded me with what he's been able to do. Not a particularly big running back, but a very durable running back for Notre Dame. Jackson, little play action fake, comes up and he hits for Kai Nelson. Shalom Tofri with the tackle. Gain of about seven yards on the play. It'll be second down and three. Charlie didn't like this one. Another play action fake. But he still takes a chance to throw it. Nice throw, tight spiral, good catch by Rakai Nelson. But look, he threw that one a little quick. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll return to South Bend after these messages. The best of friends. Yeah, I think this qualifies as moral support. Chris Clevenger there in the hat, fifth year senior, along with fellow teammate and very good friend, Ron Paulus. Clevenger out, career over. With the back surgery, and uh, Paulus and Clevenger there on the sideline when they began their careers, they thought they would never come off the field and be hoisting national championship after national championship. And if they played like these numbers in the first quarter, they'd have had a lot of national championships. Jarius Jackson, the junior from Tupelo, Mississippi, the quarterback for Notre Dame in this series. Up to Dixon, nice hole up the middle, bounces off of it. That one with insane relay. Here he goes. 20-yard line. Nice run by Alfred Dixon of 21 yards before Serino, the leading tackler, and now we see why the free safety is the leading tackler, brings him down. Rakai Nelson, a key block for Notre Dame. Dixon in seven carries has already rushed for 53 yards. Watch the cutback. Great patience shown by Denson. To the right, wait, wait, wait. Serino, number three, misses the tackle, and he bounces outside. That's one of the best runs I've seen Autry Denson make in his career. Great patience shown there. Clement Stokes comes in. Denson now comes out. Jackson has to Ken Berry. Berry has the corner inside the 10-yard line and out at the 8-yard line. Gain of 12. First down goal to go. Serino again with the stop. And Charlie again. This is the short side of the field. This way. And you see where Notre Dame runs. I run Barry the fullback to the outside. Normally it doesn't work this well in practice. Again, to the outside. You see a missed tackle there by Adam Newman. Ken Barry around the corner. First down, goal to go, eight yard line. Jarius Jackson, the two below tornado, is taking the eyes from their own 17 yard line. And now to the six yard line of Boston College. It'll be second down, goal to go. Clement Stokes, the senior from Washington, D.C., stopped by Eric Storr. Talk to uh, offensive coordinator Jim Coletto about uh, Stokes. A young man with great speed who's gone through a lot, second was ineligible goal, last year, played such great special teams that, that, uh, that Coletto thought, well, you know, he deserves a chance to play. But he hasn't learned the passing game yet, so basically all they can do is hand him the ball. Double tight end, eighth play of the drive. Dixon back in. Here's the option down the line to pitch to Dixon. He bounces it out of bounds. Ball is fumbled, goes out of bounds. Notre Dame almost lost the football. Now it's interesting, too. They run uh, Jarius Jackson on the option. Jim Rose, the defensive coordinator, said if what we read in the paper is correct, that they're going to use Jarius Jackson, it's very difficult to prepare for the pro-style offense that uh, Notre Dame runs with Paulus at quarterback, and then tell your defense you must also prepare for the option style of offense that Jarius Jackson's so comfortable with. Andrew Krauser with the last stop for Boston College. Three-yard line, third down goal to go. Ken Berry comes back into the offensive set. Jackson's running out of time, so he'll burn a timeout here. And not his fault. 
the sideline was very late getting additional personal personnel on the field. 13 minutes, 37 seconds left, first down. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Trumpy, Notre Dame up 14-0, trying to add to that total now early on in the second period. They've completely dominated the ball game. Boston College three yard on Audrey Denson's rush for 53 yards. BC for a total of only 17. Jarius Jackson, this time from the shotgun. Quarterback draw. End zone touchdown. Jarius Jackson, that is the third touchdown that he has scored this year. Well, I think Bob Davey found out a lot of things about Jarius Jackson on that particular drive. All of them good. Now back to the mystery. The kicking game, the extra point, hits the upright. But it is good. Scott Sinja, who has missed one extra point, it was blocked. This one he makes with help from the upright. We'll go back to the touchdown of the quarterback draw. It's well disguised. Good blocking up front. And Jarius Jackson came here as a wishbone option quarterback out of high school. Big kid, two, six, two and a half, 217 pounds. This is something that Ron Paulus cannot do. Last week, of course, Bob Davey and his offensive staff inserted Jarius Jackson into the T-team, that is the full house backfield. The middle linebacker was out of the defensive formation because of the three wide receivers, and Jackson waltzes into the end zone. And I like the way that he tossed the ball to the official just like he had been there before. <laughs> yes. And, and the excitement of the extra point, it is good. Uh, rather remarkable, isn't it? That, that, that the, uh, the area between the uprights is almost 16 yards wide. But the upright itself is only four inches wide. How many times have we seen the ball hit the upright? It seems to be missing the upright is easier than hitting it. Jarius Jackson leads Notre Dame on an 83-yard touchdown drive in nine plays. Jermaine Walker and Derek Crittenden are deep. Sanson will kick it away. Fielded at the 11-yard line by Crittenden. He'll be wrapped up about the 22-yard line. 11 yards on the return. Tonight, 7.30 Eastern time. Uh, you want to be with us here on NBC, 4.30 Pacific. Game six of the World Series from Florida. It is warm and humid there this afternoon. The Marlins try to become the world champions of baseball. Game six of the World Series, Indians and Marlins tonight on NBC. Through the first five, no shutouts in the World Series like is being pitched by Notre Dame to this point. <laughs> You're right. Boston College starting at their own 22 yard line. Pressure from the backside side. <laughs> Ivory Covington, the senior from Decatur, Georgia, gets the sack. That is the 12th on the year for Notre Dame. Charlie, we've already seen a safety blitz. Now the corner blitz. And Hasselbeck does not see it at all. And again, now down 21 to nothing. The best part of Boston College's offense is no good. The running game. And I'm not sure Boston College can stand back there and throw it 40 times in a win. Second down and 17. Here's flying Mike Cloud across the 50. Flag is dropped back at the 31-yard line. And there we see the shining example of the running attack of Boston College, 45 yards. Devron Harper finally stops him, but they may bring it back. The first positive play at all, the legal block in the back on the offense. The first positive offensive play at all for Boston College is called back. And it really was positive. That alone, even though called back, has to give them some kind of a spark. Alan Rossum is the injured player. He's down at the 40-yard line. He's being administered to on the far side of the field. There he is. He is the only one with the speed to match the running backs of Boston College. And he's also an excellent kick 
returner. Oh, yes. returner. He's up and all right. Against the offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Now, this is one of the things I like about the college football. They don't identify the player on the penalty. And it's not going to happen until uh, they watch the film. I know. <laughs> but we always are telling you, we go searching for yeah, it. We always go searching for it. It's one of our codes. <laughs> nice start and stop move by Clown. Not that big an opening this time. The play will be dead at the 23 yard line. It'll be third down. Deke Cooper, uh, Johnny Sanders check into the defensive set. Antoine Jones makes the last tackle. Charlie, uh, Tom O'Brien's worst fear has been realized here in the first half. He, he said that uh, his fear was that Notre Dame could overpower his football team, and to this point in the first half, they have. Third down from the shotgun. Hasselbeck in trouble. He'll be dropped to the 20 yard line. Corey Miner got it. Now that's the third sack in the first half. One by a safety, one by a corner, and now by an outside linebacker. Fights off the initial blocker. It's Cloud 21. And Hasselbeck on kind of a half roll. Again, no one down the field to throw to. And again, it's the lack of the running game. The defense is dropping to the spots where Hasselbeck wants to throw. Jason Malecki will kick it to Andre Dixon. Another terrible kick. He's having a bad afternoon. Out of bounds at the Irish 49 yard line. 31 yards on the kick. 11 24 time remaining. Second quarter. Notre Dame is up 21 to nothing. Eleven twenty-seven. time remaining in the second quarter. Notre Dame up 21 nothing. They have the ball at their own 49 yard line. And Matt Hasselbeck on the uh, point on the other side. Well, Brian Gregson, I don't know who Hasselbeck is talking to, but he better have some real special stuff to tell him. Ron Paulus returns as a quarterback for Notre Dame. Jackson in for that long touchdown drive. Paulus rolling to his right, throws on the run. Pass is complete. Jabari Holloway, the freshman tied in, battles his way inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Serino again with the tackle. What looked like a play that was going to oh baby pick up the first down ended up with a gain of 32 yards. Jabari Holloway a true freshman. Get this he's taking 18 hours this year in his first semester in college. Whoa. He's going to be a computer engineer. I mean he's only been here two months and to this point in the season they've not thrown him any passes but he's gotten two receptions today one for a two point conversion. Sweep to the near side cutting back is Ken Berry the fullback. He'll pick up a couple of yards on the play Chris Hovan with the tackle. 4.8 yards a rush 81 yards total in the first half and it's spread amongst a bunch of players not just all Autry Denson. Uh, Notre Dame is to say the least having their way with Boston College. Second down eight 17 yard line of BC. The Irish up 21 nothing. Baller sets throws to the end zone into coverage. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. Bobby Brown went up for it. George White came down with it from Boston College, but out of bounds. Not a bad pass in the coverage. There was a crowd over there, Charlie. <laughs> there was. You see, there's just enough pressure by 51 stores, and Paulus can't follow through. Brown almost makes the catch. Does not have control. Excellent call by the officials. He, would, he never established a foot down in the field of play. Bring the ball back to the 17 yard line. Flag on the far side of the field at the 13. Dead ball foul. 
unsportsmanlike conduct against the Boston College bench. Half the distance to the goal line, takes the ball beyond the line to gain. First down for Notre Dame. I disagree with those kind of calls. I completely do. That's part of the excitement of it. Of course you've got to get excited. You've got to get upset. This is Tim Rose, the defensive coordinator, Whoops, way back on the sideline. There is a coaching box in football just like there is in basketball. Tim Rose out of the coaching box. Frankly, that's an easy call, Charlie. I know, but I, I don't like that rule. <laughs> I like him to enjoy it. First down goal to go eight yard line. Dixon into the end zone for the touchdown. Audrey Dixon has his eighth touchdown of the season. Dixon now eight carries, 61 yards, and the score. And again, the big offensive line of Notre Dame. This is not a big defensive line from Boston College. And watch the shove. Watch the push. Excellent lead block by 28. Ken Berry. Denson to the goal line before there is X before there is any contact whatsoever. But you don't want to miss the excitement of Scott Sinja and the extra point. Hey, he's got this one. Way to go. <laughs> right down the middle. Even John Docker is smiling. <laughs> The eyes of Ron Wallace, the quarterback for Notre Dame. He has to Denson. Denson's eighth touchdown of the season. The Irish now lead 28 to nothing. Ten minutes and nine seconds still to go. First half. Notre Dame up 28 nothing over Boston College. Tom O'Brien, the head coach of the Eagles. Jermaine Walker and George White are now the deep backs on the return. Jim Sanson will kick it away for Notre Dame. High and short, taken by one of the up backs. That's Scott Gregos, the tight end on the return. Out to about the 26 yard line. Let's go back to the excitement of the extra point. Uh, Senja makes it. Uh, Hunter Smith is the holder. This is a dead down the middle. And of course, last week he was the kickoff guy. And Sanson was the extra point guy. You heard John Dockery talk about their little kicking clinic last week after they lost the game. Sanson squarely on his side. Actually, the only friend that kickers have is another kicker. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> they celebrate together. Boston College with a 26 yard line. Has to be right on target. Nice pass. Jermaine Walker pulls it in. The junior reviews it. Benny Gilbo there for the Irish as we go down to John Dockery. You know, Joe, you're talking about the kickers, and I'm a little surprised to see Sinja and Sanson doing so much celebrating, though an extra point is a big thing here these days in South Bend. But Sinja, when he talked about taking over the job this week, he said, you know, I'm trying to keep my, within myself, not a lot of emotion. I just want to concentrate what I'm doing on what I'm doing and just do it uh, without a lot of emotion. Obviously, that's changed now. Oh, there's a couple of college kids enjoying the afternoon, John. Second back through, Omari Walker. Walker to the 40-yard line, has about four yards, second at six. Bobby Howard with the tackle. If there is one huge factor this, to this point in the first half, it is that rushing yardage. 15 carries, just 25 yards. And again, Walker and Cloud have, to this point in the season, coming into this game, have combined for 1,099 yards, averaging close to five yards a carry. That 15 yard compares to 92 yards rushing for Notre Dame. Whistles and flags. Omari Walker stopped at the line of scrimmage before the play really got underway. Big East officials. Hal Priest, the man in the white hat. Against the Eagles. Boston College total offense thus far 50 yards. Mm -hmm. They have been penalized 49. Why? Wow. Well, the people up in Boston will tell you, look, this is a second half team. Well, they better they better hurry. <laughs> yeah. They better envision the rest of the second quarter as a second half and get it in the gallop. They need to get down the field in a hurry. Second down, almost 12 yards to go for the first down. Hasselbeck, good protection, throws into a crowd. Nice reception by Todd Pollock, the senior from Rye, New York, who came to 
BC as a quarterback. He lost out in that. The quarterback race to Hasselbeck became the tight end, and he's on the receiving end now. Deke Cooper with the tackle. Actually, Pollock admitted that when they were both competing for the quarterback spot as underclassmen, he talked very poorly about Matt Hasselbeck and other guys on the team. Now they're roommates at BC. They so were best friends. He said, I've apologized to him a thousand times for bad mouthing him. Third down and one. Omar Walker slips the tackle. But may not have slipped enough. Bobby Howard. Bobby Howard stops him. I'm not sure. It looks inches shy from here. If they do not, they did not make it on that third down. I'm Go not for sure. It. Yeah, he Go has any it. choice whatsoever. What's, well, he is going to send in the punt team. I'm surprised. I am too. Jason Malecki, the kicker. Well, that, that shows how much respect Tom O'Brien in this first half now has for the Notre Dame rush defense. And this is a great rushing offense, and he doesn't think they can pick up half a, half a yard. Well, Mari Walker's been held to nine yards and seven carries. A little bit better kick. We'll roll down to the 13-yard line, where Notre Dame will take over. With seven minutes and 27 seconds left to go in the first half, up 28 to nothing. Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium on this cloudy, cold autumn afternoon. Notre Dame next week will return here hosting uh, Navy. Boston College will be home hosting Pittsburgh. Look at that. Wallace, the quarterback, comes out fine to Bobby Brown, the wide receiver. Shalom Tolfrey, the senior from Kansas City, brings it down. Uh, Several things you have to like about Notre Dame's approach here offensively in the first half. One, they've gotten the ball to a lot of different receivers. Brown with his first catch of the half, included the tight end Jabari Holloway. And really, to this point, the Boston College defense has barely got their cleats down on the ground. They don't know what's coming next because everything is working. Second down, a yard. Clement Stokes. Has the first down, has the corner, out across the 30, out about the 31-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. George White is the man who got him, the sophomore from North Royalton, Ohio. A rare holding, Notre Dame. Notre Dame completely dominating the game. They're up by a score of 28 to nothing. That is their first penalty, and it comes with 6.45 to go in the first half. Is it because of here's the call on the offense? Ten yard penalty. Ten yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. What were you going to ask me? Is it because of the quarterback controversy? Is it because of Jarius Jackson taking Notre Dame on a long touchdown drive that I have the feeling that Paulus is playing with more abandon and having a lot more fun? Well, maybe that's true. Yeah. Maybe it's, that's true. It's, it's like here. Let's go. Let's go play football. But this offense also fits perfectly against a defense like this, especially when the other team's offense can't run the ball at all. Clement Stokes. Breaking tackle after tackle out across the 30 to the 31 yard line before Markel Blunt stops him. 15 yards. I've been an awful lot of long runs. And again, one of the things that Boston College has suffered with there is another flag. Well, two plays, two holes. Two nice runs that are brought back. On the offense, half the distance to the goal line. Repeat, repeat the play. Second down. The ball goes back to the nine-yard line. Still second down. I'd run Clement Stokes again. Same play. Why not? The boundary, yes. And whoever's holding requests that they don't hold this yes. time. Request, <laughs> demand. Three wide receivers. Gets the, the call, doesn't have the blocking that he had before. The ball is at the 10-yard line. 
Charlie, several times today you heard me talk about run into the boundary. This is the short side of the field. That's called the boundary. This is the field side of the uh, defense. Most teams have run into the short side of Boston College's defense because they put their stronger guys, their more experienced guys, to the wide side of the field for a little more pursuit. Travel with that last tackle for BC. The ball now at the 10 yard line. Third down, 13. If Boston Collins can hold Notre Dame here, they could come up with pretty good field position. Third down, 13. Holds on the right side for Clement Stokes. Stokes out to the 15 yard line. That will be way short of the first down. Markel Blunt with the tackle. It's fourth down, and the Irish will have to kick it away. First punt in the ball game for Hunter Smith. Not a bad call though. Ahead 28 to nothing. You don't want to give your opponent any sign of life. You don't want a, a turnover on a tipped ball. Just run it into the line of scrimmage and uh, let Hunter Smith, who has been an excellent punter throughout his career here. Jermaine Walker, the return man. Has pressure. Nice kick. Walker, 40 yard line. Happy feet, there is nothing there. He'll end up with about three yards on the return. The Cleveland Indians, the Florida Marlins, game six of the World Series, 7.30 Eastern time, 4.30 Pacific. Florida leading the series three games to two. They could be the world champions later on this evening, or Cleveland could come back and remain in the battle. Mike Cloud pulls it in, they say it's incomplete. I thought he had it. Boston College today, total yard 60, penalties 49. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Tom O'Brien expected a great deal more out of uh, his Eagles. Here in South Bend, he's uh, consulting that, uh, that list of things he may have gotten from George Welsh as a, uh, an assistant with Georgia Navy in Virginia for 22 years. Not much you can do down 28 to nothing. Mike Clown. Around the right side, gets the corner. And out of bounds in the neighborhood of the 50-yard line, Alan Rossum, who was shaken up earlier, back in the ball game and makes a stop. Charlie Boston College, there, Greg Madison, the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame. He call anything he wants, but Tom O'Brien's got to act like, look, the game just started. Work our way back into this game. Go back to our original game plan. We've got to run the ball a little bit, take some pressure off our defense, give it a rest. Third down and three. You said their strength is a running game. They have to find that again, but here they're throwing on third down. Oh. And it's dropped. May have been tipped. Wasn't tipped? I don't believe so. I thought it was. Mike Cloud, the intended receiver. Or Frank Chamberlain. This is just here a little is. swing pass out to the fullback in the flat. No, no, not a tip. He looked upfield, trying to make a big play out of it. I think Frank you could see, yep. see him turn his head. Jason Malecki will kick it away. Lawson steps away from it. we we'll go to the nine yard line. So Notre Dame takes over their own nine yard line. Following a 40 yard kick is a flag drop. Two flags are down. We have four minutes and 18 seconds. That is now three flags. Time remaining. In the first half, the Irish are up 28 to nothing. And all the officials are making notes. We still await their decision. If I read lips correctly, it was personal foul against Boston College. Now watch it take place right here. See the, the push in the back. They don't get the first guy. The Notre Dame player pushed him and he pushed back. And it's Chamberlain. And the flag is thrown. So 15 more yards for Notre Dame. Notre Dame leading Boston College 28 nothing just over four minutes to go first half. In the fourth quarter, we will be selecting the Chevrolet Scholarship Program's MVPs of the ball game, one for Notre Dame and one for Boston College. We got a couple of choices for Notre Dame. I don't have any choices yet for Boston College. Game still young. Game still young. Hoping for someone to emerge here for the Eagles. Notre Dame averaging six and a half yards on each play. 
Boston College two and a half yards on each play. Notre Dame, their own 24-yard line. Dominating all phases. Ballers. Play action fake throws it away. Krauser did not take the fake. It was in hot pursuit. Jabari Holloway was nearby. He was really throwing it away. Look at that total yard. 252 Ooh. to 67. Two first downs to 13. 28 nothing on the scoreboard. Mm. There is one bit of saving grace at uh, this point. I'll give it to you after this play, right. Charlie. Second down, 10. Irish at their own 24 yard line. Nelson across in motion. Ball his hands through the tailback. Denson, he put on the brakes right at the line of scrimmage. Chris Horan was sitting there waiting for him. The sophomore from Rocky River, Ohio. Now, what did you have? Well, well, there is some bit uh, of good news for Boston College. Last night, their hockey team beat Notre Dame 3 2. So, came from behind in the third period. Yes, they did. Came from behind in the third period. So, but it's not working the football Eagles' way today. Perhaps the third period here. Perhaps. And Notre Dame has struggled in the third period. Scoring only 10 points all season. All 10 came in one game against Pittsburgh. Yes. Third down and 12. Don't go away. More excitement in the second half. Ball from the shotgun. He goes to Rakai Nelson on his knees, and he has it. But it's short of the first down. With everything going, do you gamble here? No, you don't, of course. Hunter Smith will come in to kick it away. Uh, again, Good with, catch. with some experience, Nelson will run the pattern past the first down marker and then come back to it. As it is, they come up short. Hunter Smith into park. Jermaine Walker, the junior from Houston, is the return man. Pretty good kick, turns over, takes it to the 20-yard line. Heads to the near side. Out of bounds, around the 31-yard line. 47 yards on the kick, 11-yard return. You mentioned the hockey game. Well, here it is at Joyce Center Fieldhouse. Now, Boston College and Notre Dame, two quality college hockey programs in this country. And of course, Boston College hockey up in the Boston area. I'm not sure which they'd watch if both were on, football or hockey. It's that big. Three quick Boston College strikes have not got Notre Dame in the lost column for the first time this season. Notre Dame had been dominating the third period. They were unable to do so as BC dominated the third period. Yeah, so that's it for that tape. We can't run that again. So nope. Now the football team is going to have to supply some highlights for us. <laughs> First down, BC, 240 left to go. First half has a man wide open over the middle. Great touch pass to Mike Wazo, the sophomore from Oakland, New Jersey. Big play for Boston College. Harper got him after 32 yards. Perhaps a spark that BC needs going into the end of the first half. Actually, that that should not have worked. But it Boston, did. Yeah, the Boston College Eagles have not run the ball well enough for the tight end, the tight end to be open down the middle. That should not have worked. Notre Dame, 39-yard line, first down. Three wide receivers. Three-step drop, fires a quick out, far side to Derek Crittenden, who pulls it in. Alan Rossum was there along with Corey Miner. Now, Charlie, again, we go back to the last play. Here's the tight end. And you can see that this is a zone. He gets by the linebacker. It's a double zone. You got corners up, safeties out. That that play should not have worked. There, when a team can't run against you, there is no reason to really sit back there in a double zone. Second down and eight. Omari Walker getting the call. Now the offense of Boston College for the first time in the ball game is cranking. Billy uh, Benny Gilbo with the tackle. Now at the Notre Dame 27-yard line. Tom O'Brien can see some life in his ball club. But one thing about these kids from Boston College, they are not ones to give up. No matter how far down they are, last week again down 24-3, came back to uh, take the game into overtime against Miami. Here they're down, 28 nothing. first down, 27-yard line of Notre Dame. Fans now getting in the ballgame. Little play action, fake, throws it high, leaping catch, touchdown. Anthony DeCosmo, who has missed the last four games with a hamstring, 27 yards, and Boston College has scored. That's DeCosmo's just 
Just his 12th catch of the year. But his fourth touchdown. But his fourth touchdown. A great throw by Hasselbeck. Well executed. And the Notre Dame defense now playing a little bit too soft. Manage will attempt the extra point. The holder is Matt Hasselbeck. Right down the middle. Boston College, a quick strike. They're on the board. Notre Dame now leads 28 7. Right, corners up. Safeties rotate out. Both corners, both safeties. The Cosmo runs a nice pattern down the sideline. And Hasselbeck really humps up on this one. He puts some steam on it, waits for it, puts it almost on a line. Excellent catch by the Cosmo. A young man who was 6'3 and a half, 210 pounds, releases inside the corner. Which Devron Harper, number 10, should never let him do. Deke Cooper, the safety, never rotates out far enough. And Deke Cooper at six, four and a half should be up after that ball. But there is life for Boston College at the end of this first half. That was a great throw by Hasselbeck. A 69 yard drive in four plays, 27 yard touchdown pass. You consider the onside kicker? Well, Notre Dame is thinking about it because Tony Driver is the deep back on the return. He's up at the 10-yard line. Terry Hannafin will Everybody has snuggled up a bit. They haven't, as a return team, have not made a full commitment. Terry Hannafin, Dix Hills, New, Dix Hills, New York, will kick it away. Do you gamble here with it? I don't think so. I think I'll kick it away. High and short. Taken at the 20 yard line. Where Notre Dame will go to work. That was a Johnny Sanders on the return. Sun America halftime report. Greg Gumbel, Chris Collinsworth in a New York studio with scores and highlights. A full report on the World Series from Hannah Storm and Keith Overman. Don't forget game six tonight in Miami at 7.30 Eastern time, 4.30 Pacific time. The Marlins are up. 3-2, preview of tomorrow's game, week number nine already in the NFL. We're at the halfway mark, and we're going to be uh, flying quickly tonight to Washington, D.C. Yeah, we participate in that doubleheader tomorrow with the Redskins and the Baltimore Ravens. Get That's the new stadium. Get to see that new stadium. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Notre Dame with their own 28-yard line. They come out throwing, screen off of the shotgun. Denson lurking behind the screen goes out of bounds. Adam Newman chasing him. That stops the clock. Minute eight left in the first half. Uh, Charlie, you're going to see Boston College here. I think uh, go that extra yard here. Come with some blitzes. Try to get the turnover to uh, add to the momentum at the end of the first half here as best they can. But there is going to be some pressure. Tim Rose again, the defensive coordinator, understands that uh, they need a turnover. That's the only way that Boston College can get back in this game if Notre Dame begins to turn the ball over. Hollis goes to an audible. Has protection. Good blocking from his lineman. A quick out to Denson on the sideline. He goes out of bounds. Well, that was the outlet receiver. That was just a four-man rush. So no blitz that time by Boston College. The guy Nelson will check in. Holloway, the tight end, comes out. Notre Dame now with three wide. From the shotgun, Gatherall is in. Blitz, quick freshman, blitz coming, throws. Pass is pulled down by Nelson. Battles his way to the 50-yard line. Pass was a little high, but Rakai Nelson at 5'11 went up to pull it down. He picks up 16 yards before Mike Willett, the sophomore from Alexandria, Virginia, can stop him at the 50-yard line. Nelson now has four receptions for 59 yards. And Notre Dame goes right back to the line of scrimmage. From the shotgun. Dumps it off to the near side. This is Ken Berry. Berry gets out of bounds. He'll stop the clock at the 40-yard line. Markel Blunt was chasing him. Now 41 seconds left. Notre Dame still with two timeouts to burn. And 
Aldis has done an extraordinary job today of spreading yeah. the ball around. Not really falling in love with anybody. But back to what I said, I think he's having more fun. It's just a feeling. I think he's enjoying it. Yeah, well, last week we sat with him and he said, you know, they're going to put uh, Jarius Jackson in there and he's going to run the uh, T team. That is uh, the full house back. Is, I'm all right. Apparently he's all right this week. Yes, too. He is. He's thrown to seven different receivers, like you said. Blitz. Quarterback draw. If Jackson could do it, he must have hurt you. You said he couldn't run that, and he just did. That's for Bob Trumpy. Okay. Well, <laughs> Jim Coletto makes the call. I think you can see the difference between Jerry as Jackson on the quarterback draw and Ron Paulus. And now Notre Dame burns one of their timeouts to stop the clock. 32 seconds left. It, it, this is not beautiful. It's functional, but it's a good call because the middle linebacker is gone. Unfortunately, they catch uh, Boston College in a stunt, and Ron Paulus runs right into the stunt, so he gains very little yardage. That's Scott Singer, the field goal kicker for this ball game. A quarterback comparison. Two for two for Jarius Jackson, and he ran for a touchdown. Paulus, 11 of 19. Through for a touchdown and a two point conversion. Jackson taking Notre Dame on an 83 yard touchdown drive. Both quarterbacks have been very effective today. Yes. Well, just about everything has been very effective for Notre Dame. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tom O'Brien is already uh, piecing together his halftime speech. Fellas. Jay Johnson is in as a wide receiver. He has one reception on the game. His number is, uh, on the year. His number is 11. Second and five. Blitz coming from the outside is picked up, throwing it away. Two receivers within a couple of yards of each other in the near side. Somebody in the wrong pattern? Uh, absolutely somebody in the wrong pattern. No question about that. You, you mentioned it, Jay Johnson. Uh -huh. He was there with Denson, I yeah, believe. I, I would take the veteran. <laughs> <laughs> Denson is the experienced upperclassman. Johnson is the young fellow. I, I'll bet he, uh, this is Jay Johnson, number 11. I'll bet he ran the wrong pattern. BC now. They want a timeout. They stopped the clock with 27 seconds left. Let's go down to Dockery. You know, Charlie, you've probably been, been looking for Malcolm Johnson, one of his go-to receivers for Notre Dame, uh, Paulus, and he's been out of the game for about the last 15 minutes, sprained both his ankles when someone rolled across his ankles, and uh, they're not sure whether he's going to be back or not. We'll get a, a further assessment at halftime. And that, of course, is the reason that Jay Johnson yes. now comes in as his replacement. And we're also seeing more of Rakai Nelson. Mm -hmm. He also backs up Malcolm Johnson. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to stay with us on NBC this evening. Game six of the World Series at 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific. The Florida Marlins and the Cleveland Indians in the warm weather of South Florida. You know, actually, this may sound really foolish. I kind of liked watching that game the other night with snow flurries. I, I really <laughs> did. <laughs> Having played football, I thought, you know, <laughs> put those spoiled brats out there in a little bad weather. Let's see how they function. <laughs> And as I was cruising the Weather Channel this morning, 20 inches of rain in Denver, I mean, of snow in Denver, what if the Rockies would have been? <laughs> this is the Irish's eighth, eighth possession of this first half. Four touchdowns and driving here. Third down and five. Wallace, Blitz is picked up. Goes to the far side to Nelson. Get out of bounds. That's Rakai Nelson on the reception. Get out of bounds. Notre Dame will stop the clock with a timeout. They have to stop the clock to move the chain. So the clock is stopped with 19 seconds. Paulus is already calling the play. He's got him ready to go. Clock is now moving. Screen, nicely hit the screen, and Dixon goes out of bounds. 
You notice Paulus looking to the right, looking to the right, and come back, comes back left with a short screen. Nothing there on the short side of the field. It'll be second down. 12 seconds. Time remaining. We've got a timeout. Irish player hurt on, on the far sideline. Side Out of the field that I believe that's Autry Denson. Yes, it is. He, of course, as you know, if you follow Notre Dame football, he's the workhorse this year for the Irish. 683 yards rushing coming into the ball game. 60 yards and a touchdown and nine carries in the first half. 106 yards, 20 carries in the first half of the SC game. Let's see if we can pick anything up there. All right, kind of bangs into the, uh, the uh, yard marker a little bit. But I, I see that Denson has his socks down on that one leg. Sometimes that's sometimes that's done because you, you experience some leg cramps and it just gives a little more air to your legs, but he seems fine limping slightly. Clement Stokes will replace him. Wallace comes over to the sideline momentarily. I saw that last graphic of Denson in his first half has touched the ball 12 times. Scott sends you the field goal kicker. 12 seconds. Will they give him a long range shot? I wouldn't. They might. Look for a confidence builder. Goes to the end zone. It is incomplete. Oh, he should have caught it. Bobby Brown goes up for it. Cannot pull it down in the end zone as Paulus was right on target. Timed his jump perfectly. Oh, right. Oh, yes, you're right. Should have had caught it. it. And they are going to try a long distance field goal. Scott Sinja will attempt it. Hunter Smith is the holder. John Spicklemeyer is the snapper. From the 37 yard line, a 47 yard attempt by Scott Sinja, the senior from Melbourne, Florida. His first field goal attempt. Looking good. Doesn't get there. Short from 47 yards away as time runs out in the first half. The first half completely dominated by Notre Dame. Halftime they lead by a score of 28 to 7. Here's another look at the missed field goal. And as the ball comes to rest on the turf, we go down to John Docker. Thank you, Charlie. I'm with Coach Bob Davey and Coach. We saw both quarterbacks in the uh, first half. What's your assessment? I think, first of all, our defense played very well up until that last drive right there. Uh, you know, we gave up two big plays. Uh, you know, we decided to defer and let our defense play first. I thought they really responded well. Welcome back to Notre Dame. It is halftime. The Irish are up by a score of 28 to 7. And we are joined by President Gerald Ford, who was honored before the ball game, an honorary member of the uh, Notre Dame Monogram. Notre, thank you, Notre Dame Monogram Club. Yeah. And also there it is. And also you spoke to the, you spoke to the, to the ball players last night, Friday night. They asked me to stop by the dressing room, so I had an opportunity to give uh, a little pep talk to the Notre Dame ball team. They're an impressive group of young kids, and I was honored and privileged to uh, shake their hands and give them the best wishes. It worked. It Mr. worked. Pre yeah, Mr. President. <laughs> Speaking of young kids. <laughs> Uh, oh. The center for Boston College in today's game is 19 years old. He's 6'5", weighs 310. What, what did you weigh? There, there's Damian. <laughs> Damian, what, he's 6'5", 310, he's 19 years old. What did you weigh when you were an offensive lineman for Michigan? I weighed 197 pounds. <laughs> I was 6 feet tall. I was among the big biggest on our uh, uh, offensive line. Today I would I wouldn't qualify. <laughs> <laughs> tell us that we were looking at the photo we couldn't see, but tell us how you got your number. Well, in those days, uh, you weren't given a number based on the position you had. When I went there as a freshman, I went to get my equipment, and the equipment manager threw a jersey at me, and he said, 
They're, you're number 48. <laughs> <laughs> so you were 48th in line, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, we, you, we promised you that you could always, you wouldn't have to visit with us during the ball game, that you're ready to start, and we appreciate you dropping by. Thank you very right. much, Charlie and Bob. You, yeah. It's nice great to, to be with you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. We really appreciate it. And by the way, also congratulations to Michigan defeating Michigan State today. <laughs> you never thought they would. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. President. And we are underway with the second half, and Notre Dame will have the football on the kickoff of the second half. Ah! Alan Rossum, the speedster on the return, who was shaken up, returns for 19 yards in the Irish. We'll go to work again. Here's first half possession for Notre Dame. Uh, hard to imagine a better start. Five possessions, four touchdowns for the Notre Dame Irish. You see the number of plays run in the first half. So there was very little that went wrong. Uh, Notre Dame also got Jarius Jackson in for a series, an 83-yard scoring series. So there was nothing but pluses for Notre Dame in the first half, nothing but negatives for Boston College. And we'll start the second half with a flag on the ground. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That we believe was on Mike Denver, the senior from Hinsdale, Illinois. So Notre Dame will. Now start first and 15 at their own 21 yard line. Yeah, I think Bob Davey knows that, that graphic proof. Just 10 points in the third quarter so far this season, all in one game against Pittsburgh. And up comes still in jeopardy here. This is drop Bobby Brown. Paulus is he's on target. The one in the the one in the end zone that he went up for that Bobby Brown could have would have should have brought down. This one he should have caught. And remember the one uh, earlier in the ball game that Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm Johnson, number six, hit him right in the, the middle of the six. But I, in Bobby Brown's defense, I think the linebacker was right between Ron Paulus and Bobby Brown. He didn't see that thing until the linebacker was by him, and then he couldn't make the catch. Second down and 15. Little fake draw, and it followed by a sack. Eric Storrs again. That's his second sack of the ball game. That gives him 11 on the year. And he's he, tough to bring down. He is absolutely tough to bring down, and he is the outside linebacker. In a lot of instances, he'll get a tight end or a running back trying to block in him, block him. And in this case, again, it's the fullback Ken Berry, and Eric Storrs will blow up most fullbacks when it comes to, to pass protection. So, second half starts. Notre Dame, third and 20. Mm -hmm. This is what Bob Davey fears in this third quarter. It's just been horrible for Notre Dame so far this season. Notre Dame up 28-7 over Boston College. Boston College with a late drive at the end of the first half. Paulus goes way right, throws down the sideline incomplete. Notre Dame will be forced to kick it away. Boston College could have very good field position. George White had the coverage. Joy Gatherall, the intended receiver for the Irish. Well, I'm sure Tom O'Brien told his punch, look, Notre Dame scored 28 in the first half. We can certainly score 28 in the second half. Uh, they, again, they came back from 24-3 down to Miami last year, uh, last week. So Boston College has been in this spot before. Jermaine Walker is the return man. Hunter Smith, the kicker, has pressure almost blocked. Walker will stay away from it. It'll go out of bounds at the 43 yard line. 41 yards on the kick. We'll be back. Watch this. Mike Guazzo almost blocks it. Welcome back to Notre Dame. Boston College first opportunity on offense here in the second half. They'll start from their own 43 yard line. Amari Walker is the remaining back. They open with three wide receivers. Walker to the right side. Has a nice hole. Cuts back. 
battles his way literally for close to 10 yards on the play before Harper can bring him out, bring him down. First half possessions by Boston College, three, four, three and out plays, two, four and out plays, all resulting from a lack of running game. That's what Boston College does all the way around. You see the interception that produced the first big turnover for Notre Dame on which they scored. But if Boston College can run, they can compete. And for you telestrator watchers, that was me. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't circle it. It's yours. Don't ever Don't touch, touch it my again. machine. <laughs> you got it. Now I know why. Omari Walker getting the call. Corey Bennett with the tackle. Chance to uh, check out the other games going on today. Second quarter, Ohio State leading Northwestern. Arizona leading Washington State in the second period. Missouri, Oklahoma State, 51-50. Whoa. Final two overtimes. UCLA continues to roll the other team in Los Angeles. Kansas State over Oklahoma by three. Oh. Here comes Walker. Underhand throw by Hasselbeck <laughs> yes. for a completion. I make that point because last week against Miami, and he, he told us when we talked to him that uh, he can make a play. Last week, he completed a pass left-handed. It was called back because of a penalty, but this is underarm, and it's thrown to Omari Walker, and you turn a negative into a positive. Good presence in the pocket by Hasselbeck. Dansby had a hold of him, and Brian was chasing him. Third down. Not a lot there. Well, you got a tough choice here now for Tom O'Brien. Great field position, plus side of the 50. I'm not sure you punt this ball away. He's sending additional people in. He is going to punt he it away. He is going to punt it away. Jason Malecki will kick it away. Or at least he's sending out the punting team. Fourth down inside of five yards. I wouldn't think he'd go with a fake, but he might wipe, try to draw Notre Dame offside. Yeah, this goes with a straight punt. Oh, and he keeps it right in the end zone. Yeah, so out to the 20. Out to the 20. Very, very, very poor choice and execution there by Boston College. Nothing gained. We've got a timeout. 11:22 left. We're in the third. Notre Dame up. 11:22. Time remaining. Third quarter. We're just underway with the second half. Notre Dame from their own 20-yard line. Follows the quarterback. Fumble. Fumble has got a couple of flags and quickly dropped. Boston College has the football. Andrew Denson with the fumble on the exchange from Ron Paulus. And then we had flags on the ground. Holding on the offense. This penalty is declined. First down, Boston College. To Tom O'Brien with... The big break for the Boston College Eagles here in the third quarter as they have the fumble. Exchange never clean and Hoban, Hoban from the nose tackle spot there to knock the ball away from from Autry Denson. You, you could see that Paulus had to stretch but a big play by the defense. Now can the offense take advantage at the Notre Dame 16 yard line first down. Back to the running game, Omari Walker. Let's go down to John Dockery. You know, Charlie, for folks who may not have followed Boston College, they are a second-half comeback team, as Bob Trumpy said. But let me just tell, remind folks of this. Against Rutgers and against West Virginia in their victories, they outscored the opposition 28-7 to in the second half. And, of course, last week against Miami, they were way behind and lost by one point. So this is a second-half comeback team. Second down off of the turnover. Hasselbeck from the shotgun, a swing to the right flat. Omari Walker is upended at the 11 yard line. That was an excellent tackle by Alan Rossum. Nice little swing pass out in the flat to the fullback. You can see Hasselbeck is looking downfield, then swings it out there. Uh, that's well done. Squares up, sets his shoulders, gives the uh, running back nowhere to go, and makes a nice tackle. There's the Archie Dixon who fumbled the ball. Yeah. Third down conversions, only one of nine. 
This is third down and six. Blitz. Little outlet pass to the 10 yard line. Mike Himmert, the fullback. Fourth down and five. And again, what you want to do if you're off, an offensive uh, coordinator, you want to get one on one out here in the flat. Well, they get exactly what they want, but number five of Johnny Sanders makes an excellent open field tackle to uh, make the Boston College come out with fourth down and four and a field goal attempt. 27 yard field goal attempt by John Maddich. He has hit four of eight. His longest is 40. He sails it through for three more points for Boston College. They're now up to 10. Notre Dame has 28 and the Eagles is starting to creep back on them. That's my favorite show. It'll never happen. <laughs> It'll never happen. Niles and the, Daphne no, the, would not the, be able to. The nose gets longer. Yes. <laughs> it's a Pinocchio nose. <laughs> Niles and Daphne would not be able to move in with Dr. Frazier Crane in this death. There's Ron Paulus and Audrey Denson talking about what happened on the fumble. Paulus was laid away from center, had to stretch, and Denson never got a hold of it. The whole man was the young man who uh, was there almost at the exchange. By the way, he is the only redhead in his family. Really? Loves it. <laughs> Says I get extra special attention. <laughs> Alan Rossum is the deep back on the kickoff return. High and deep to the three yard line. He's out to the 10. 15 has a shot right at the middle. Cuts back to the far side. Brought down around the 28 yard line. 26 yards on the on the return. Serino again makes the tackle for Boston College. Right. Total yards. Yeah, 294, 159. And the lack of rushing by Boston College is the thing that's really got him in this spot. Down 28 to 10. And now the pressure is squarely on Ron Paulus. Second half, Notre Dame has been a very average football team and miserable in the third quarter. Paulus, the quarterback, he pitched to Denson. Out to the 34 yard line, has six, second down and four. Markel Blunt with a tackle. And look at Ron Paulus' numbers 13 to 25. Good day. The other plus, I think, for Notre Dame's offense in this third quarter, Autry Denson is fresh. Ran the ball well in the first half, but they didn't wear him out. So he can be the uh, mule in this third quarter if you want to give it to him 12 or 15 times. Second down. Here is Denson. At Boston College waiting for him. He'll lose a couple. Let's go down to John Dockery. Charlie, a couple of injury updates for the Irish down here on the sidelines. Malcolm Johnson, the fine wide receiver, he's out. Sprained ankles, won't be back. Number 77, Brad Williams, defensive starting end for the Irish. He's out. And interesting, Audrey Denson banged his knee at the end of the uh, second quarter there, but appears to be just fine, as you can see. Back to you. All right, thank you, Doc. Loss of three. Third down and seven. freshman from Hacienda Heights, California. Just a yard past the marker for the first down. That's exactly where he wanted him to be. Fastest man on the team. You're going to see the motion man, Bobby Brown, go by him. They have great hopes for Gatherall, but we're talking about the, the smallest guy on the field. Well, it's going to get shoved a little bit there by Hovan. Hovan doesn't want to come up with a dumb penalty, and he kind of pulls off a little bit smartly. First down, 40-yard line, converting on third down, seven. Wallace airs this one out. Little pushy. by Kendall all. Did he get away with it? No, he didn't. He pushed him in the back. It was a very late flag. <laughs> We're talking about a player here who's just five feet, seven inches tall. <laughs> he had to push him aside just to see the football. The PC players live it. <laughs> he pushed me. He was right. Shalom Tofri was the eagle who was pushed. We'll take another look at it. 
Gathero's middle name is Isamo. Brave warriors, mother's Japanese. He and his father met during the Vietnam War. <laughs> Excellent push. <laughs> look at that. Wouldn't look, you say? Look, yes, a good push. And nice. no, notice, notice what he does afterwards. Notice how he grabs, turns away, gets away. Now watch this. Excellent push. The official right there marks where his feet were in and then calls the play kick. Offensive pass interference against Notre Dame. 15-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. That takes the ball back to the Notre Dame 25-yard line. First and 25. He is tiny, isn't he? Yes, but the fastest player yes. on the team Play. by a lot. Yes. The block that springs him down the sideline. He goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line. There's a flag down at the 31, and also a Boston College player is down at the 31-yard line. Yarbo finally stopped him, but not until he was in Eagle territory. 29 yards on the play. But Irish, the Irish offense walking back it again is against Notre Dame as this nightmare third quarter mm -hmm. continues for Notre Dame in 1997. Notre Dame still leading 28-10, but really have not done anything that is counted in the second half. And we're almost halfway through, past halfway through. Yeah, and of course, Bob Davies said we're going to defer uh, today, so we hope we're fresh in the second half. Block in the back on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat the down. First down. The ball goes back to the 21 yard line. First and 29. I'm not so sure I wouldn't call the same play. Try it again. Clement Stokes is in. Denson is out to take a bit of a breather. Stokes gets the call. Run defense is there for Boston College. Stores. Another flag comes out. Now this is a late hit now by Boston College, so it's going to wipe out that first and 29, and it's going to give Notre Dame a first and 10. First and foul against Boston College. Clement Stokes is down. It's a late hit. He's down and there. Oh, there it is. Whoa. That's no not, question on that one. Yeah, that's not difficult to figure out. No. And it's on Pedro Serino, Serino too, the leading tackler. Foul. Yeah. Personal foul, late hit on the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Remember that was first and 29. Yes, that's yes. a dumb mistake. That, yes. Big time dumb. Yeah. Autry Denson, meanwhile, will come back into the offensive set. And Charlie Serino has been one of the real bright spots yes. for the Boston College defense. Mm -hmm. Stokes was the young man who was hit, seems to be okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, Boston College just let Notre Dame out of a huge hole. Notre Dame now out to their own 37 yard line. First down and down. Jay Johnson, Rakai Nelson into that offensive set. Two wide receivers on the near side. Dixon the remaining back. He's the ball carrier. Cuts to the near side. Slips a tackle. 49-yard line. 11 yards on the play. Charlie, double tight end offense. Spreads the defense and you give you give Audrey Denson all kind of choices. Good job of getting the cutoff block to give him an alley behind the intended spot of the play. And then again for a 190 pound running back, great strength. Audrey Denson breaks an awful lot of tackles for his size. 75 yards rushing in the ball game. He'll deduct a couple from that total. He'll lose two here. It'll be second down 12. Markel Blunt. Makes the tackle for Boston College. 
Six minutes, 20 seconds time remaining in the third. Only points scored in the third. Matt had just 27 yard field goal for Boston College. Second and 12. Ball is to throw. Goes deep. The race is on. Diving grab. It is there for a Ty Nelson. 44 yards. Several times today, Charlie Notre Dame has tried the middle of the defensive coverage because three, Sereno is their leading tackler. That indicates to Notre Dame that he's going to be cheating to the line of scrimmage. And when they've caught him cheating to the line of scrimmage to help stop the run, Paulus has combined it. Malcolm Johnson, he hit deep on a long one. Now he hits Rakai Nelson deep for a long one. 110 yards receiving for Nelson in the ballgame. Nine yard line, first down goal to go. Back to the ground, Audrey Denson. Denson to the five yard line, will be second down and goal to go. George White with the tackle for Boston College. Now you remember, first and 29, the penalty, first and 10, drive stays alive. So Tom O'Brien recognizing on the road, you can't give Notre Dame or any team this many chances. Serena was the guy on the penalty. Second down go. Denson to the two yard line. It'll be third down and goal to go. I know this is generally the spot where they bring in uh, Jarius Jackson for the uh, key team. Full house backfield. Driver coming in. Two tight ends. Clement Stokes. Jackson comes in. And Jackson. This is the two team. Third quarter scoring. Remember only 10 points. That's all season long for the Irish. Third down. Play action fake. Rolling behind it is a man open in the corner. The end zone overthrows. Is that Tim Ritter that he overthrew? Yes. That is Tim Ritter. They, they can't really decide what to do or where to play Tim Ritter. Offensive line or tight end. And Bob Davy is saying fourth down goal to go. No, we're going to go with Scott Sinja. Do a hear, field goal attempt. Do I hear boos here yeah. in Notre Dame Stadium? Either they're booing or they're holding their breath in unison. No, no, no. In that case, they are booing. Senja has missed short from 47 yards. 0 for 1 today. Hunter Smith the holder. John Spickelmeyer is the snapper. This one is good. Dead, solid, perfect for 20 yards away. College 407. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. There is the overthrow. Here is the field goal. Notre Dame 31, Boston College 10. Bob Davy on the sideline when Senja walks by. That's, uh, congratulations. Not a ringing endorsement. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. And Serino, of course, the guy with the penalty on first and 29 mm. and made it first and 10. Mm. And produced the three points at the end of the drive. So Notre Dame now has produced 13 points this year in the third quarter. This kickoff will go through the end zone and touchback will bring it out to the 20 yard line. This is time for one of Charlie's memories. This is earlier this year, the book signing of the Notre Dame bookstore. What makes winners win? Now in its third printing. Oh, they were lined up. Yeah, they were. Oh, yeah. Didn't I see you give uh, President Ford a book? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. I did personally autograph it too. Are you going to send him a bill like you sent no. to, to me? <laughs> no. No. Tell me no. the truth. Does no. he get his for no. free? Because no. he, he gets he gets his for free as a as a leader of the free country. Oh, well, I'm now, your broadcast partner. Why did you send me a bill? You're, you're not leading the free country. <laughs> well. 
I paid it. Well, you, you, you're doing well. Yes, you did. And I appreciate it. And I appreciate Bob Thompson and his staff at the Notre Dame Bookstore. They were really great. We had a super time. May have been past the line of scrimmage. In fact, I think he was past the line of scrimmage when he made the throw. No flag. No flag. Nobody picked it up. Again, Hasselbeck trying to make a big play. He had... Cosmo pulled it in. We have a Notre Dame player down. I think it was about the 22 yard line. Uh, very, very close. But yeah. again, there was no flag yeah. thrown. Ivory Covington is the player. All right. All right. Line of scrimmage is the 20. Let's see how Hasselbeck. He's got a couple of options out here in the flat, but he's trying to make a big play. That's why he tries to go to DeCosmo. 20. No, boy, he, you know, he, he, had, he had the sense, the mm -hmm. presence of where that yard mm -hmm. marker was. Mm -hmm. Good play. Uh, very nicely done. Yeah. Hasselbeck. Uh, growing up in New England, Hasselbeck had the good fortune because his dad played with New England to hang around the Patriots and was the ball boy for the Patriots for one complete season as the injured Irish player now up. But he got to uh, work out in uh, Foxborough Stadium. And uh, at the time, uh, McPherson was the head coach. Threw the ball to uh, Ben Coates. Threw the ball to Sam Gash. And here's his dad, Don Hasselbeck. Tight in, went to Colorado. What do you say? I got my hairline from my dad. Yeah, got my hairline from my dad. <laughs> got my athletic ability from my dad, but uh, and his personality from his mom. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, Hass was a pretty good, pretty good tight end, pretty good receiving tight end. That on from the other end was uh, Steve Grogan. Hasselbeck, Don Hasselbeck was also a very good artist, and I asked. Young Hasselbeck, if he inherited any of his dad's artistic talent, he said, no, just his hairline, just as you said. 33 yard line, first down. He also has a younger brother, Tim. That's the third street oh, quarterback. That is a great athlete. Gives Crittenden down the sideline inside the Notre Dame 40 yard line to the Irish 37, a gain of 30 yards. Back to back first downs for Boston College. They're underway in the third quarter. Yeah, and again, Matt. Hasselbeck, as opposed to taking the surefire thing short, he had him. He's trying to make the big play. Coverage dropped on Crittenden. And then finally, 30 yards later, the tackle. Bobby Howard and friends make it at the 37-yard line. There's Covington on the sideline with the Notre Dame team doctor. Over the middle, right on target to Todd Pollock, the tight end. One of several. Explain again the tight end story. 25 yards on the play. Well, th th there are so I, many of them. Yeah, the tight end situation when Dan Henning was at Boston College was uh, he had two or three in the lineup at the same time, H back and whatever. Uh, uh, Tom O'Brien has tried to spread these guys out in other spots, but Pollock, an ex quarterback, an excellent receiver, one of one of the most outstanding uh, tight end receivers in college football that you can find today. He has a great sense of what the quarterback needs. Decent speed. Can get the ball down the field. And uh, he's turned out to be one of uh, Matt Hasselbeck's favorite targets. Pollock has three receptions for 65 yards. Notre Dame wants a timeout. Here's a program note. Great NFL action continues tomorrow with a doubleheader beginning at 12 noon Eastern time with the NFL on NBC. Denver's Terrell Davis, arguably the best running back in the game. He'll be chatting with Greg Gumbel. Plus, Steelers coach Bill Cower, the Aces Warren Moon. What a season he is having. And the surprising New York Giants and much, much more. The game one, most of you to see the Broncos traveling to Buffalo to battle the Bills. Good thing Buffalo not traveling yes. to Denver. They couldn't land today with all that snow. Then in game two, the Jaguars take on the Steelers or regional actions to check your local listings for the game in your area. That's on. That's uh, NFL and NBC, a doubleheader tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. Bob and I will be flying very quickly tonight to our nation's capital. We've got the game between the Redskins and the Ravens at uh, Jack Kent Cook Stadium. I'm anxious to see that new stadium. It should be a fun ball game. Absolutely, the only stadium I've yet to see. Battle of the Beltway. I think Battle it's the only one that I haven't broadcast out of. First half and third quarter comparison. You were right, Boston College. You and Doc reset it. Second half ball. Second club. half team, and especially huh? if uh, if Notre Dame gives them many opportunities. Mm -hmm. Again, though, they are driving here, but I do believe that the only way that Boston College can get back in this game, as 2:58 to go in the third quarter, is Notre Dame must turn the ball over, and uh, they did once, and uh, Boston College got no points out of it. 
First and ten at the 12. First down, 12 yard line, 258, time remaining third quarter. Straight power play right at the middle by Mike Emmert, the senior fullback for Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania, former tight end. Former tight end. You can find him everywhere. But they run the running back out in motion and a rare give to the fullback. Normally they're just up there to uh, block. But an excellent job up front by the Boston College offensive line. And now second and short inside the four. Try the same thing, this time to the left with him at the fullback. He'll go to the one-yard line, which should give him the first down. Should be first down and goal to go Grant Irons, the son of Gerald, the former linebacker with the Raiders and Brands, uh, Raiders and Browns, and Lamont Bryant push him back. It'll be first down, goal to go. Now how costly is that penalty against Boston Sorry, College? Yes. I said three points. You said even more important. Four minutes off of the clock. Absolutely, because there's two twelve and counting left in this third quarter. Once again, leaning in now with a touchdown is Mike Himmert, his fourth touchdown of the year. 6 3, 245 fullback. And now what this does for Boston College is it feeds to their fate this season that we are a second half team and it gives Boston College faith on their sideline that they can again come back and make this a football game 31 16 extra point to come Maddish to attempt the point after Hasselbeck is the holder. He has got it. 31-17 with just over two minutes to go in the third. Now it becomes a bit of a mind game. Yes, it does. Now, it, there are a lot of things at play here. One, whether or not Bob Davey would chance Jerry S. Jackson because uh, he wanted to give him a shot in the second half at quarterback. Do you? All right, let me just slip in, though, with this program note. Next Saturday at 1.30 Eastern time, We'll be back. Notre Dame football continues. The midshipmen of Navy travel to South Bend to try and break a 33-game losing streak against the Irish. Then at 5 p.m. Eastern time, Ahmad Rashad hosts the NBA preview one-on-one. -on -one. Analysis of the upcoming season from Bill Walton and Hubie Brown. That's Notre Dame football and the NBA preview show next Saturday beginning at 1.30 Eastern on NBC. And let me add to that program note. Stay with us on NBC this afternoon. The World Series in Miami, Florida. That will be game number six at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Bob? Now, Jerry S. Jackson on the sideline now. The reason I think that you know, this situation now, 31-17, elim eliminates Jerry S. They can't run the entire offense with Jerry S. at quarterback. Now, there's about 30% that they can run. It's a special group of plays. Jim Coletto told us that uh, they need a week's full preparation to kind of tailor the offense around Jerry Jackson. So I think we're going to have Paulus in here with just a a 14 point lead at this point. And the sun is starting to break through the clouds as the short kick comes down as fumble and then picked up at the 21 yard line and noted that was uh, Devron Harper, one of the up backs. They cover it at around the 22 yard line as we go down to John Dockery. Bad news, Charlie. More bad news for the Irish as Ivory Covington is on the sidelines. He took off his shoulder pads. They just put ice on his neck and shoulder, and it looks as though he won't be back in the game. And of course, he's their starting cornerback. They're having problems on defense against the uh, BC Eagles. So Covington gone. Well, mm. 22 yard line. Ball is the quarterback. Gibson wrestled down after a gain of a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Now 31-17. Generally the choice here is you be very conservative. You don't want the turnover. Of course, everyone remembers what happened to a Notre Dame fourth quarter last week against USC, the big interception, although it did bounce off a receiver's hands. So this is the point where Notre Dame needs someone to make a big play. Denson 60 yards rushing in the first half, 21 here in the third quarter with a minute 18 to go. Paulus to throw. 
It's a bit low, but it is caught for the first down at the 35-yard line. Bobby Brown catching it on his knees, 12 yards on the play, then showing it to the official. I've got it. Yep. Actually, a very good call and a very good reception. Thrown low by Paulus, I believe intentionally. Good zip on the football. But in, in, at that point, with a third down in a crucial situation, you don't mind the, the receiver standing dead still for the reception. He does not need to be running. So well done by Notre Dame. Clement Stokes back in the ball game along with his fullback, Jamie Spencer Gatherall, wide to the near side at the bottom of the screen. Little play action fake, rolling left, setting and throwing. This is Gatherall along the sideline. He is out. At the 40, about the 45 yard line of Boston College, DJ Sutton took him out. 19 yards on the play. You don't think that the, the people at Boston College know the speed of Getherall? Watch the cushion that the corner allows. See, 25, he's a defensive back slash receiver. And uh, DJ Sutton is going to make sure that a fellow freshman, Joey Getherall, does not get by him. Therefore, roll easy completion. Gethrall at Bishop Amont last year averaged 24.2 yards a catch. That was tops in the state of California. Clement Stokes. Couple of yards to the 43-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Well, even though Notre Dame has scored just three points in the third quarter, and uh, Boston College has scored 10, uh, Notre Dame has really been in control of this third quarter because they've controlled the clock. And, and, and what Boston College needs is the ball and a lot of opportunities, and Notre Dame's not afforded them many in this third quarter. Second down. Play action, fake Paulus in trouble, has to throw it away. Good defensive play. Now they're going to drop a flag on Eric Storrs. Storrs played it so well. So well until the hit and then he blows it at the end. No need for it. Be a personal foul. Stores is untouched. They're hoping he bites on the play action fake inside. And the hands goes to the high. face mask. He stays what, down low. The hands have been OK. Right. That's what cost him the yep. penalty. So another costly penalty personal against Boston foul. College on the defense blow to the head. 15 yard penalty, first down. Penalty is marked off from the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame 31 17, and Boston College continues to make dumb mistakes. Yeah, that, that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. you know, they made about two or three, of them, and they've all been very costly in these situations. No question. And yeah. Storr, as a senior, knows better. Yeah, he's, he's too good of a ball player to do that. Serino, one of their best tacklers, makes a dumb penalty, mm -hmm. gives him an automatic first down. Now Storrs. 28 yard line of BC first down. 25. Three. Stokes inside the 20 fights his way to the 17 yard line. Chains will move for the first down. We'll take the count now now to the end of the third quarter. So with three in the book, one to go. It is Notre Dame 31, Boston College 17. Back after these messages from your local station. Charlie, I, I'd be safe to say that those two penalties. Let me write his name in. Charlie, I, yeah. I'd say that those two penalties just took any steam right out of Boston oh, yeah. College's effort. Yeah. Oh, it did. What's his name? No. Mike. No, no, no. Pronounce it for me. Saravo. Saravo. Okay, yeah. Forget the rushing yards. Paulus's stats applies. No question. But also penalty yardage against uh, Boston Saravo. College yep. is awful key here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Billy, Good. one more score of any kind of Notre Dame and you run it. But again, the penalty yardage I against the Boston to College to is, is, is key here. Did you hear me? What was that? The, pen, the yeah. penalty yardage against Boston College today, yeah. just Boston College, okay. well, is key. Well, we'll get that. And a comparison or just theirs? No, just theirs. There you are, Charlie. 
10 for 95. Yep. <clears throat> and the other thing they always say it doesn't, it's when they come and they all came at bad times. Yeah. We need to build a graphic. Boston College penalties 10, 95 yards. Boogie boogie. Yeah. None of them cheap either. No. The 15 yarders, unsportsmanlike conduct, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. It is first, first and, and ten. ten. Okay. <clears throat> Your ISO monitor should be right in front of you. There Fourth you go. quarter. <laughs> Fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's 51 and 3? Well, especially if they score yeah. any points. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if, if they yeah. score. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, stores and um, uh, Serena. Yeah. 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 We start the fourth quarter here at Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame 31, Boston College 17. Boston College trying to creep back on the Irish. Meanwhile, the Irish with a drive underway, and Boston College continues to hurt themselves with penalties as Clement Stokes carries. Now, what has Ron Paulus done in the fourth quarter? Well, it's been shaky this season. Five of six interceptions, seven of ten sacks, one fumble lost, 62% complete. Awful numbers. My opinion, set up by an absolutely miserable third quarter all season long by Notre Dame. Pressures on the quarterback to respond. Tries to make the great play. All right. And I agree with you. That's the net result. Yep, I agree with you. Stokes again. He'll battle his way to the 10 yard line. It'll be third down and three. Adam Newman makes the stop. Check the ticker. The other collegiate games. Michigan soundly defeating Michigan State, which pleased President Gerald Ford. Yeah, it kind of surprised me, time. too. Oh, oh, me surprised too. Me. When uh, Michigan time. State beat, uh, beat Notre Dame, I thought they'd be one of the top uh, two or three teams in the oh, country, yeah. but uh, they 20, lose to Northwestern last week, and they lose to Michigan now. 23-7. Score of that ball game. You want to say they were within field goal range, but that's always a dicey statement with Notre Dame. They've converted seven of 12 third down opportunities. Third down and four, officially. Ball is fake the inside hand. Royce throws in the end zone for the touchdown. Bobby Brown catches it in the end zone. Now, the Mile High Saloon comes to South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> was that a blown play? I don't know, but it was a sloppy, it was a sloppy fake. But it all counts. One thing I can tell you, Bobby Brown is, is not even a receiver of consideration when you first draw this play up. He comes from the backside. What they're trying to do is get the fullback out in the flat, but there's great coverage by Boston College. Wallace takes a chance throwing it late down the middle. Brown makes the catch for the score. Sinji will attempt the point after. He gets it high, and it is good. 38-17. Charlie, here, here's the first guy. Here's the first guy that he wants to throw to. But this is Bobby Brown. And as Paulus rolls, there's great coverage on the fullback out in the flat. See the fullback there? So Brown comes loose. Excellent throw by Paulus, but he's taking a chance throwing it late down the middle. Brown makes the catch. See where he's looking to begin with? And he looks away. Oh, that, that's a year ago Ron Paulus couldn't do that. Look off, find another receiver, and the mile high salute stolen from the Denver Broncos. Jarrell Davis started it all. Absolutely. He said, We're the foot soldiers. 78 yards on the drive, nine plays. Look at there. Celebrations all around. Yeah, with Jerry and Jerry Jackson. Jackson. He said before the ball game, talking to John Dark, he says, We're good friends. We don't Absolutely. have a quarterback controversy. Yeah, I, I think one of the reasons why uh, Jerry S. Jackson is so supportive of Ron Paulus. Because Jarius Jackson wants to be the next starting quarterback for Notre Dame, and he knows he's going to get a lot of what Ron Paulus has gotten in the last three or four years. Taunts, uh, boos, even some people spitting on him leaving the stadium last week in the loss to Southern California. So, But if he has a character in class for Ron Paulus, then he will be a great young man. You got that right. Yeah. All right, here's the kick. Bob Orton then for a moment picked up by George White. White makes a nice recovery out to about the 22 yard line. 13 yards on the return. Career passing yards against Boston College. 
50, 71, 118, 267. Gee, they may want him back for one more year. <laughs> no doubt what he might produce. Uh, first now, time today. Rod may have overheard you because he was laughing too. Well, I was going to say it's the first time today I've seen a smile yeah. on Paulus's face. Maybe the first time in two or three weeks. Yeah. yeah. He he did tell. I don't want to steal John Dockery's thunder, but he did tell John Dockery that it's been tougher on his wife, his new wife, and Sarah, and mm -hmm. his parents. Yes. All of this situation. He said they're not even involved. Nice fake and a good pass. This one to Todd Pollock again, the tight end, brought down by Harper. The big story of the game at the end of the first half, if you were with us, uh, Bob Davies said to John Dockery, the defense has done a great job. Look at look at the rushing yardage for these two guys. That's the the one rock, big rock that the entire offense of Boston College is, is built around. And Notre Dame's rush defense has been outstanding all day long. Second down five. Three wide receivers with the man in motion. Pass is complete over the middle. It'll be a first down at the 40 yard line. Anthony DeCosmo. Missing four games with a hamstring coming back as a touchdown reception of the ball game brought down by Gilbo. Scott uh, Dr Dragos or Scott Dragos number 83. The tight end with the reception. All right. But Notre Dame will give the tight end receptions. That's deceptive because there's so many tight ends. Yeah, <laughs> and you'll give the tight end. To, it's not the big play. He's going to get 10, 12 yards for you. The clock is your ally now if you're Notre Dame. Hasselback. Deep over the middle. This one is pulled down by Tardio. Rob Tardio. Tight end. 24 yards. That's a semi big play. Yeah, and again, the Notre Dame defense real lax. There's Tardio right there. Runs right by Benny Gilbo, number two. Gilbo subs. This is zone. Deke Cooper again, really slow to get over there as Notre Dame is going to take a, a timeout here to go to Madison. So Madison can uh, chew on their ear a little bit. Or any other part of their anatomy. Whatever shows. 12-19. <laughs> time remaining. Back in a moment. We are back 12-19 time remaining in the ballgame. Notre Dame up 38-17. Steve Daper number 17. One of the wide receivers is in and the three wide receivers set. Hasselbeck is pressure. Avoids a little shuttle pass underneath. He'll end up losing a couple of yards on the play. Todd Pollock, the tight end. Sir, certainly didn't do Pollock any favors. No, he did. He drew a big crowd in a hurry. Why me? Yeah. Hasselbeck now 16 of 21 on the day. That's Pollock's uh, fifth catch. Hasselbeck does try to make the play, but I mean, you know, there's a real crowd around That's right. Pollock. <laughs> I see Pollock in the huddle. Uh, next time. <laughs> Matt. From the shotgun over the middle underneath the cover. Foot race is on and is won by Mike Guazzo. Nice play. He came chugging across and picked up 20 yards. Crossing pattern is the key. Guazzo starts from over here. You're going to see him come across the picture underneath. It looked like Alan Rossum, the fastest player on Notre Dame's roster, one of the fastest, kind of trips a little bit. Can't catch up with Guazzo. Another nice completion for Boston College. 18 yard line, first down. There without Dennis Harding, the wide receiver. He has the flu. He's one of their speed merchants. Not playing in the ball game. To the right side is Mike Cloud. Brad stops, cuts back. Uh, great job, defense. Notre Dame has shut down the running attack, haven't yeah, they? Absolutely. They really have closed the door on it. This time, Lamont Bryant. No, makes one, the of the, one of the key things on defense is you keep the guy moving laterally. You don't give him a chance to get up the field and watch Belial 56 does that. Corey Miner does that. Lamont Bryant catches him from behind. When you've got great speed facing you like Cloud, that's exactly the way you want to play defense. Three wide receivers from the shotgun. Second down and eleven. Fade into the end zone. No goal. The Cosmo, the end. 
intended receiver. Rossum had the coverage. Now that's trying to take uh, advantage of a tall receiver into Cosmo at uh, 6 3 over Rossum. A short but tenacious cornerback. The Bulldog. And they can't quite make the connection. This drive, six passes, one rush, and that rush lost yardage. Third down. Pass it up from behind. Nice reverse, picks up a block. Waves, goes in the end zone, and he's almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by Ty Good, who's replacing Ivory Covington, who is injured. So, I'll tell you one thing, Hasselbeck does not give up on anything. No, but he should, I think he should have run it. I think he had a few yards that he could make. Well, he's looking for anybody, somebody move around somewhere, and you're right, this ball should have been intercepted. Oh, yeah. It was intended for Crittenden, but underthrown. Maddich in now with the field goal attempt. He is hit from 27 yards away, Hasselbeck. Here's the holder. This one's from 36 yards out. He's hit from 40 this season. It is good from 36 yards away. Boston College creeps back into the ball game, 38-20. We start the fourth quarter here at Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame 31, Boston College 17. Boston College trying to creep back on the Irish. Meanwhile, the Irish with a drive underway, and Boston College continues to hurt themselves with penalties as Clement Stokes carries. Now, what has Ron Paulus done in the fourth quarter? Well, it's been shaky this season. Five of six interceptions, seven of ten sacks, one fumble lost, 62% complete. Awful numbers. My opinion? Set up by an absolutely miserable third quarter all season long by Notre Dame. Pressures on the quarterback to respond. Tries to make the great play. All right. And I agree with you. That's the net result. Yep. I agree with you. Stokes again. He'll battle his way to the 10 yard line. It'll be third down and three. Adam Newman makes the stop. Check the ticker. The other collegiate games. Michigan. Soundly defeating Michigan State, which pleased President Gerald Ford. Yeah, kind of surprised me too. Oh, kind of me surprised too. me when uh, Michigan State beat, uh, beat Notre Dame. I thought they'd be one of the top uh, two or three teams in the oh, country, yeah. but uh, they 20, lose to Northwestern last week, and they lose to Michigan now. 23-7. Score of that ball game. You want to say they were within field goal range? But that's always a dicey statement with Notre Dame. They've converted seven of 12 third down opportunities. Third down and four officially. Ball is fake the inside hand of Royce, throws in the end zone for the touchdown. Bobby Brown catches it in the end zone. Now, the Mile High Saloon comes to South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> was that a blown play? I don't know, but it was a sloppy, it was a sloppy fake. But it all counts. One thing I can tell you, Bobby Brown is, is not even a receiver of consideration when you first draw this play up. He comes from the backside. What they're trying to do is get the fullback out in the flat, but there's great coverage by Boston College. Wallace takes a chance throwing it late down the middle. Brown makes the catch for the score. Sinji will attempt the point after. He gets it high, and it is good. 38-17. Charlie, here, here's the first guy. Here's the first guy that he wants to throw to. But this is Bobby Brown. And as Paulus rolls, there's great coverage on the fullback out in the flat. See the fullback there? So Brown comes loose. Excellent throw by Paulus, but he's taking a chance throwing it late down the middle. Brown makes the catch. See where he's looking to begin with? And he looks away. Oh, that, that's a year ago, Ron Paulus couldn't do that. Look off, find another receiver, and the mile high salute stolen from the Denver Broncos. Terrell Davis started it all. Absolutely. He said, We're the foot soldiers. 78 yards on the drive, nine plays. Look at here. Celebrations all around. Yeah, with Jerry and Jerry Jackson. Jackson. He said before the ball game, talking to John Dargan, says, We're good friends. We don't Absolutely. have a quarterback controversy. Yeah, I, I think one of the reasons why uh, Jerry S. Jackson is so supportive of Ron Paulus. 
Because Jarius Jackson wants to be the next starting quarterback for Notre Dame, and he knows he's going to get a lot of what Ron Paulus has gotten in the last three or four years. Taunts, uh, boos, even some people spitting on him leaving the stadium last week in the loss to Southern California. So, but if he has a character in class for Ron Paulus, then he will be a great young man. You got that right. Yeah. All right, here's the kick. Then for a moment picked up by George White. White makes a nice recovery out to about the 22 yard line. 13 yards on the return. Career passing yards against Boston College. 50, 71, 118, 267. Gee, they may want him back for one more year. <laughs> no doubt what he might produce. <laughs> Uh, first now, time today. Rod may have overheard you because he was laughing too. Well, I was going to say it's the first time today I've seen a smile yeah. on Paulus's face. Maybe the first time in two or three weeks. Yeah. yeah. He he did tell. I don't want to steal John Dockery's thunder, but he did tell John Dockery that it's been tougher on his wife, his new wife, and Sarah, and mm -hmm. his parents. Yes. All of this situation. He said they're not even involved. <laughs> nice fake and a good pass. This one to Todd Pollock again, the tight end, brought down by Harper. The big story of the game at the end of the first half, if you were with us, uh, Bob Davies said to John Dockery, the defense has done a great job. Look at look at the rushing yardage for these two guys. That's the the one rock, big rock that the entire offense of Boston College is, is built around. And Notre Dame's rush defense has been outstanding all day long. Second down five. Three wide receivers with the man in motion. Pass is complete over the middle. It'll be a first down at the 40 yard line. Anthony DeCosmo. Missing four games with a hamstring coming back as a touchdown reception of the ball game brought down by Gilbo. Scott uh, Dr Dragos or Scott Dragos number yeah, 83. The tight end with the reception. All right. But Notre Dame will give the tight end receptions. But that's deceptive because there's so many tight ends. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll give the tight end. To, it's not the big play. He's going to get 10, 12 yards for you. The clock is your ally now if you're Notre Dame. Hasselback. Deep over the middle. This one is pulled down by Tardio. Rob Tardio. Tight end. 24 yards. That's a semi big play. Yeah, and again, the Notre Dame defense real lax. There's Tardio right there. Runs right by Benny Gilbo, number two. Gilbo subs this is zone. Deke Cooper again really slow to get over there as Notre Dame is going to take a, a timeout here to go to Madison so Madison can uh, chew on their ear a little bit. Or any other part of their anatomy. Whatever shows. 12-19. <laughs> time remaining. Back in a moment. We are back 12-19. Time remaining in the ballgame. Notre Dame up 38-17. Steve Daper, number 17, one of the wide receivers is in, and the three wide receivers set. Hasselbeck is pressure. Avoids a little shuttle pass underneath. He'll end up losing a couple of yards on the play. Todd Pollock, the tight end. Sir, certainly didn't do Pollock any favors. No, he did. He drew a big crowd in the hurry. Why me? Yeah. Hasselbeck now 16 of 21 on the day. That's Pollock's uh, fifth catch. Hasselbeck does try to make the play, but I mean, you know, there's a real crowd around <laughs> Pollock. <laughs> I see Pollock in the huddle. Uh, next time. <laughs> Matt. From the shotgun over the middle underneath the cover. Foot race is on and is won by Mike Guazzo. Nice play. He came chugging across and picked up 20 yards. Crossing pattern is the key. Guazzo starts from over here. You're going to see him come across the picture underneath. It looked like Alan Rossum, the fastest player on Notre Dame's roster, one of the fastest. Kind of trips a little bit. Can't catch up with Guazzo. Another. Nice completion for Boston College. 18 yard line, first down. There without Dennis Harding, the wide receiver. He has the flu. He's one of their speed merchants. Not playing in the ball game. To the right side is Mike Cloud. Cloud stops, cuts back. Uh, 
Yeah, great job defense. Notre Dame has shut down the running attack, haven't yeah, they? Absolutely. They really have closed the door on it. This time, Lamont Bryant. No, makes one, of the, one of the key things on defense is you keep the guy moving laterally. You don't give him a chance to get up the field and watch Belial 56 does that. Corey Miner does that. Lamont Bryant catches him from behind. When you've got great speed facing you like Cloud, that's exactly the way you want to play defense. Three wide receivers from the shotgun. Second down 11. Fade into the end zone. No good. The Cosmo, the intended receiver. Rossum had the coverage. Now that's trying to take uh, advantage of a tall receiver into Cosmo at uh, 6 3 over Rossum, a short but tenacious cornerback, the Bulldog. And they can't quite make the connection. This drive, six passes, one rush, and that rush lost yardage. Third down. Pass it up from behind. Nice reverse. Picks up a block. Waves. Goes in the end zone. And he's almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by Ty Good, who's replacing Ivory Covington, who is injured. Ty, I'll tell you one thing. Hasselbeck does not give up on any no. play. But he should. I think he should have run it. I think he had a few yards that he could make. Well. He's looking for anybody. Somebody move around somewhere, and you're right, this ball should have been intercepted. Ooh, yeah. It was intended for Crittenden, but underthrown. Maddich in now with the field goal attempt. He is hit from 27 yards away. Hasselbeck is the holder. This one's from 36 yards out. He's hit from 40 this season. It is good from 36 yards away. Boston College creeps back into the ball game, 38-20. 10 minutes and 14 seconds. Time remaining. We're in the fourth quarter here at Notre Dame. Irish lead 38-20. Now Bob Davy is going to be facing some decisions that he's going to have to make here in the fourth quarter. But first things first, Alan Rossum is the deep back on the kickoff return. It is high and very short. Rossum moves up, takes it at the 20-yard line. Across the 30, the 35, he breaks it. He's got it. All the way. Rossum, 80 yards. Turn against Pitt. Opening kickoff 93 yards. Second time he has done it this season. Eighth in his career. Ties an NCAA record. And even the extra point is good. And Charlie, let me point this out to you. This kick is to kick away from Alan Rossum. That's why it was kicked so high and so short. Watch the hesitation, then the acceleration. Meanwhile, the head coach of Notre Dame, as he observed from the sideline. Yeah. Charlie, how often is it that in the college football you find a cornerback who has played almost his entire career on defense with eight touchdowns? I mean, you talk about some point production out of a spot, a cornerback you don't expect. That changed all kinds of Everything. complexions and decisions. Now we see Jarius Jackson at quarterback yes. the next time Notre Dame gets the football. 
<laughs> and the question is, we may have seen him anyway. We're not sure, yep. but we may have. Look, look at there. Well, he turns. <laughs> I, that, that's extraordinary. That is. That truly is. Deion Sanders didn't have that at Florida State. Remember we talked with Alan uh, a week ago, and uh, he came in to speak at the lunch and had the coat and the tie on, and did, he did. very oh, yeah, he did. loaded yeah. with confidence. Yeah, he, he's one of eight kids. He's been running like that uh, for most of his life. As a matter of fact, he's the youngest of eight, so he, he ran for his dear life with <laughs> right. brothers and sisters. Walker and White are the deep backs on the kickoff for Boston County. This one is high. It is also short. White finally picks it up. Slips the tackle. Looks for help. Battles his way back to the 20-yard line. We mentioned at the top of the show that Frank Lay, former head coach at Notre Dame, of course, was for two years a head coach at Boston College. This is the Bob Davies now, the head coach at Notre Dame, his office. As he looks out his window, <laughs> guess what? Right across the street, this great statue of Frank Lay, who was head coach at BC in 39 and 40, and they were undefeated in 1940. And it's a, it's a tremendous statue. I was over there the other day, and a former a former player for Lay was there. It's a great statue. Why is he smiling? <laughs> Scrambling out to around the 24-yard line. Alan Rossum, remember a moment ago, 80 yards of the touchdown. Yeah. Now he makes a tackle on the play. Yeah, you know he looks really, weary. Yeah, we just saw that statue of Frank Lay. I, I'm sure there are nights when Bob Davies sits in his office when he wishes that statue could talk to him, and then there are nights when he wishes that statue would shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Three wide receivers from the shotgun, second down. Hasselbeck looks left, comes back right. Mike Cloud throws it in. He's pulled down as we go down to John Docker. You know, Charlie, you and uh, Trump have been talking a lot about Alan Rossman, and before the game, I had a chance to talk to some of the pro scouts. And one of the guys that came to look at was Alan Rossum. Mm. They tend to think of him in the same category as an Aaron Glenn. Remember Texas A&M now with the Jets? Yes. Number one pick Trump. Yes. Mm. They like him that way. Of course, as a return man, he's extraordinary. And a pretty good cornerback. Great speed. They like him, the pros. What about his height? The only problem is his height. They're concerned he's a little too small, but he's strong. Pass is complete for another first down. Scott Dragos pulls it in, 11 yards. How tall is Rossum? 5'8". Is that stretching it? No, that's about right. 5'8", 180. And actually, I think the NFL's perception has changed quite a bit because you, there are so many good running teams in the NFL. You'd like to have a bump and run corner of Mel Blunt's size, but you'd rather have a bump and run corner who is very quick. He doesn't have to really support the run that much. Rossum fills that bill. 40-yard line, first down. Little play action fake, turns back, wants to go deep over the middle. Shovel pass is dropped, and this be an incomplete pass. As Hasselbeck was going down, a little shovel scramble pass off to Cloud. I tell you, Hasselbeck, I'm impressed with him. He's, he's a gamer, isn't he? Absolutely. You can tell he's uh -huh. spent a lot of time around professional athletes. Make something happen. Uh, he told us that uh, his dad, uh, Don, wouldn't let him and his brother play uh, Pee Wee or Little League football. And uh, so they finally get into high school and say, come on, we want to play football. He said, I want to be a tight end. And uh, Hasselbeck has a good sense of, all right, look, if you're going to play, you're not playing tight end, you're going to play quarterback. And, <laughs> and Don Hasselbeck may have produced the next two quarterbacks at Boston College because Tim, Matt's younger brother, Matt admits, is more talented than he is. This pass is on target. Mike Guazzo, and he drags a defender along with him. That is uh, Devron Harper. You go down to John Dockery. You know, Charlie, talking about the Hasselbeck, I talked to Don before the game. He was saying about his third son in high school. He said he's actually playing wide receiver now because he's a second-string backup quarterback behind another well-known name that you guys were talking about, Steve Grogan's yeah. son. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, the, the third Hasselbeck son is Nathaniel. And uh, 
Matt and Tim both admit that Nathaniel may be the most talented. And you saw Tim just a moment ago. There's number two. There's Mike Cloud for Boston College. That advice, though, reminds me of what Dan Fouts once told a, a young kid that he was talking to. And uh, Fouts, of course, the great the Hall of Fame quarterback. And uh, he said, the young man, he said, uh, he said, do you play football? And the young man said, yes, I do. And Dan said, what do you play? And he said, I'm a guard. And he said, son, guards live in Chula Vista. Quarterbacks live in Rancho Santa Fe. <laughs> <laughs> or, or uh, if you don't know anything about Southern California, that's the difference between the Valley and Beverly Hills. That's, that's right. the point you trade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the big houses do belong to the quarterback. <laughs> Mike Cloud. But that's a great day for Matt Hesselbeck. Yes, it is. Without the running game. Yes, and he's had 10 back. different receivers. Without the running no game. No running game at all. Yeah, 20 of 28. That, that is an extraordinary performance. Because the running game protects the quarterback. Absolutely. It takes all the pressure off of the quarterback. They've rushed for a total of only 85 yards. That's the team total. 85 yards rushing. And they came into the game averaging 215. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up a little shovel pass to Mike Hemmert. Brought down by Friday the 13th at the 28-yard line. Still about three yards shy of the first down. Unfortunately, though, it looks like Boston College is going to have their uh, fifth straight loss here at the hands of Notre Dame today. But and the record well could go to two and six, and Notre Dame will go to three and five. No quit these young men, though. Mm -mm. Boston College is still making them. the effort. I like Tom O'Brien in the program that's underway. Another good pass and a first down, 22-yard line. Dragos pulls it in. Harper was there. Boston College, their remaining schedule. Pittsburgh at Syracuse, then Army. Timeout, Notre Dame. Notre Dame will take a timeout. That stops the clock. 6.23. Time remaining in the game, and the Irish are up 45-20. The scoring by quarters here, and look what has happened in the third. Yeah. Two touchdowns there for Notre Dame. Two there, two there. And just the field goal in the third quarter. The struggle in the third quarter continues. Here's a fade down the side. And this is going to be an interference call against Harper because he simply took DeCosmo out of bounds on the play. So as they sort that out, a, re a reminder to stay with us this afternoon on NBC World Series Game 6, 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific. And there's the call on the pass interference. The Florida Marlins, the Cleveland Indians, and Florida up. Three games to two in the series, and there it is as we look forward to it tonight in the warm weather of South Florida. We mentioned that because we have a report that the Denver Broncos cannot get out of Denver because of that blizzard that we mentioned earlier where they have 20 <laughs> inches of snow, and that was this morning when we heard, and they're looking for the good weather in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it'll be a lot nicer in Buffalo. <laughs> nicer in Buffalo. That's uh, let's see how many dog sleds does it take to get the Denver Broncos out of Denver against Notre Dame. This is a spot foul. It will be first and goal at the spot where the interference took place. First down. A lot to answer your question. What, what would the NFL do if there's a game seven? Would there be three Monday night? There could be games? three Monday night football games. My guess is they'd move it to Monday night because they want to play it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My goodness. First down, goal to go, nine yard line, tenth play of the drive. Hasselbeck at the five yard line, pass is complete. Frank Chamberlain, backup fullback, former tight end, brought down by Bobby Howard. Former tight end, former tight end, former tight end. Yes. Ball just inside the three yard line, second down, goal to go. 5.55 and counting. Time remaining. Play action fake. Rolling. Pressure from the backside. Sacked to the 10-yard line. It's Allen Rawson. What a ball game he has had. Young man who during the summer worked for the state of Indiana. The governor. Yeah, the lieutenant right to governor. The top. The lieutenant oh, governor. Excuse me. He put in a computer program for the lieutenant governor. They named it after him, the Ross Cross. <laughs> so uh, there he is. doesn't make it in the NFL. He's probably got uh, a pretty secure future. 
That's, by the way, the fourth sack of the day by Notre Dame. And you know, we've had very personable young man. We've had three by defensive backs, one by a linebacker. Hasselbeck simply misses the receiver. Ty Good, the coverage on Cosmo. Fourth down. Three is not going to help you at all. Nope, no doubt here. Easy choice for Tom O'Brien. Mm -hmm. The margin 25 points, 45 20. 456 on the clock. One of the fade to the right corner comes back, throws in zone incomplete. Rossum again in coverage. The Cosmo, the intended receiver. Rossum has had an outstanding afternoon. Bobby Howard got a piece of it, I believe. It was Rossum who makes the play. We'll step aside back in a moment. Four minutes and 50 seconds, time remaining in the ballgame. Notre Dame at their own 10 yard line. And Jarius Jackson makes his second appearance in the ballgame at quarter. Actually, his third. He was in as a T-teamer, in on a long drive in the first half, first appearance in the second half. He gives off to Tony Driver. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Matt Hasselbeck of Boston College, completing 23 of 33 passes, 277 yards, a touchdown and interception, and doing that with no running game to help him. And Alan Rossum of Notre Dame, of course, he had that 80-yard uh, touchdown uh, uh, kickoff return for a touchdown. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will contribute $2,000 to the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators for disbursement to deserving college students so they may continue their education. Big hole at the middle for Tony Driver. He rambles out to the 30-yard line. And just as a sidebar on the Chevrolet Players of the Year, I turn to our brilliant statistician, Ask for some numbers Down. and Notre information Dame. on Matt Hazelback. And the first thing he handed me, his mother's name is Mary Beth. <laughs> <laughs> and we wanted to honor her today because her son has really had a good ball game. Uh, she's here. She's from Cincinnati. She's one of 12 kids. So she likes a crowd. Huh? 30 yard line. side is Ken Berry, the fullback. In the Boston College territory, 23 yards to the 46-yard line. Serena with the tackle. I've got a question now. Sure. Is there still a quarterback controversy at Notre Dame? No, I, I don't think so. I, I mean, the, the reality is uh, Jerry S. Jackson is probably going to be the starting quarterback for uh, Notre Dame next year. And the year after. Barring injury. Yeah. Yes, he does have a second year of eligibility. But in, in, in the case of Bob Davey, Ron Paulus comes back for his fifth year because of his affection for Bob Davey and the fact that uh, Ron Paulus believes that uh, he's going to learn some more offense and be a little uh, nicer gym at the next level, the NFL. Looking right, coming back left, pass is complete. Jay Jackson down the side out of the 15-yard line. Well, that's an eight-yard well, completion that ends up being what a. 32 yard game. Great numbers for Jarius Jackson. Missed tackles here by Boston College. They just call this a hitch. And then the missed tackles, Serino out there. The spirit is gone from this defense. Charlie, I think, frankly, the two big defensive penalties, one on Serino, one on Stores, that kept the drive alive in the third quarter, it just put the uh, the Boston College defense just out of breath and frankly, done for the day. But to continue about the quarterback. Notre Dame 511 yards in total offense. Here's the option and the key. As he moves to the six yard line. Now here's the other factor involved. Yes. Every team in the country recruits against Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And every team in the country is looking for uh, skill position athletes, running backs, wide receivers, quarterbacks, offensive one. Now, Notre Dame has said we're not an option team, regardless of who the quarterback is. 
So other teams see uh, Jarius Jackson running the offense and running that option play. Those recruiters for the other teams call their high school kids and say, you see what they're running? It's the option. You sure you want to go there and run the option? Well, Harris, he's got it at the corner. No. Just tripped up at the last moment. Stokes, I thought he had the touchdown, but somebody got a hand on an ankle and kept him from going in. It was a saving tackle. Yeah. Just a simple sweep, something that the Notre Dame has gotten better and better at. Still didn't pick up the number. Shalom Tolfrey. Uh, he saved the touchdown. But again, so there's a lot of things involved with this quarterback situation. Uh, Ron Paulus had hoped he'd go out on top. He's going to go out sharing the duty with Jarius Jackson. Dan O'Leary is in the ball game for Notre Dame. Ken Berry is the ball carrier. And he doesn't make it in. Clock on its inexorable march now. A minute and a half left. A little bit under that. Counting away. I don't want to you know, beat this quarterback situation to death. But uh, I don't think anybody could have expected both Jarius Jackson to constantly say, I'm patient. Uh, Ron Paulus and I are friends. I'll do whatever I can for the team. And for Ron Paulus to say, look, I'm all right. I want the team to win. Both have handled it like gentlemen. Yes, they have. Men. Stokes has turned away. What happened? Stokes may be shaken up on the play. Yeah, but he was standing up and just kind of turned around. I couldn't double, just doubled over. Well, Jerry, as Jackson's out there in the huddle, he wants to yeah, score. He does. He wants it in the end zone. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame up 45 20. 40 seconds and counting down. Time remaining in the ballgame. Here's the option at the corner. He dives in the end zone. He has the touchdown. His second touchdown of the ball game is fourth of the year. Has this drive ignited the quarterback controversy again? No, no. Does it give Notre Dame options in the remaining game? Yes. Jackson has now carried four times in the ball game, 16 yards, two touchdowns. Maybe that's the better way if you're an Irish fan of looking at it. There are simply more offensive options going into the latter part of the season. The only victim in that is Ron Paulus. Yes. You're absolutely right. The extra point is good. 40, 52 to 20. We'll return to South Bend after these messages from your local station. Boston College total offense 359 yards. Notre Dame 526. Most total yards this season. They had 477 against Pitt. 526. 33 Boston seconds. Let's go ahead. Charlie, Boston College's problem is at 82 yards rushing. Mm -hmm. That is it. Taken in the end zone by Jermaine Walker. Walker to the 20, slips a bit as he makes his cut. Let's compare the two quarterbacks following that 23-yard kickoff return. Uh, Hasselbeck, 23 of 33 for 277. He was our Chevy MVP for uh, Boston College. Extraordinary numbers without the running game. Paulus, 18 of 31. Thing I like the best, he spread the ball around. Mm -hmm. Hit a lot of different receivers today. Today, 19 different receivers for three quarterbacks, 885 total yards, 72 points. Now you can say four quarterbacks for Scott Mutron. Number 12 is in for Boston College. Now, Jarius Jackson, three of four, 56 yards. His stats. Performed, Don't want to overlook those. Performed fine. Yes, he did. Now we can take the countdown to the end of the ball game. Boston College and Notre Dame. The clouds have gone away. The sun breaking through on this autumn afternoon. The quarterback controversy put to rest at least for another week. Perhaps. Final score, Notre Dame 52, Boston College 20. Tonight on NBC Sports, 7.30 Eastern Time, the Cleveland Indians take on the Marlins. Game six of the World Series. The Marlins lead the series three games to two in sunny 
Southern Florida. Thanks for being with us today. For Bob Trumpy and John Dockery, I'm Charlie Jones. So long from South Bend. We'll see you here next Saturday for Navy.